On this Veterans Day, we feature two of the nation's five service academies. They're allies at sea, but bitter rivals on the field. We're here in New London, Connecticut, where today it's the 43rd Annual Secretary's Cup, the Merchant Marine Academy, and the Coast Guard Academy, and it's coming up next. From New London, Connecticut and Cadet Memorial Field, beautiful afternoon for football. Merchant Marine Academy set to take on the Coast Guard Academy. We take a look at the conference standings in the new MAC. Springfield is a perennial power. They are undefeated at the Division III level. Merchant Marine 4 and 2. Coast Guard in the middle of the pack at 3 and 3. But Coast Guard much improved this season with five wins, their most in quite some time. Merchant Marine having another good season. We welcome you here to the shores of the Thames River. Robert Lee and Craig Hobart back with you. Pleased to be back for another edition of the Secretary's Cup Chamber of Commerce weather. Beautiful day today here in southeastern Connecticut. Craig, this game is a staple of our coverage of Veterans Week every year. It's kind of a Division Three Army-Navy game, and these kids are going to leave it all out there today. Robert, it really doesn't matter the classification. A great rivalry is a great rivalry, and trust us, this is one of them, if not the most underrated rivalry in all of college football that both fan bases and program, we're talking about fan bases nationwide, mm. many of which are still in service, that would love to have ownership of bragging rights for the next year. Over the last four years, those have been owned by the Merchant Marine Academy. We've won four in a row, but this is a Coast Guard team that you mentioned is starting to grow up. They're a little bit more experienced, have been closing that gap. Could this be the year they get over the edge? Merchant Marine features a triple option ground attack, but they've got the biggest home run hitter in the league at wide receiver. Yeah, Talison Smith is the X factor within this offense. They want to run the football. They want to control the clock. But outside, he is a home run hitter who also does a great job after the catch. Over the last three seasons, he has owned 58% of all of their catches offensively. Even though you need to stop the run for Coast Guard, he's a player that all times you need to know where he is on the field. Coast Guard is led by junior quarterback Joey Armentrout. Yeah, we talked about a team that is growing up offensively, and it has been led by Ar Joey Armentrout. You see there over the last two years his growth as a player. If he can continue to grow here and cut down on the interceptions, this could be the year that Coast Guard's able to take over in this great rivalry. Beautiful afternoon, and it will be Merchant Marine in the white jerseys, Coast Guard in the powder blues. Merchant Marine won the toss, and the Mariners defer to the second half. So they will kick off to start the game with junior kicker Jackson Tinkus. Back deep to receive for Coast Guard are Amr Badani and David Bolin. Kick is an end over end kick to the near side, taken by Bolin at the eight yard line. Coast Guard back the other way, running sideways and taken down at the 15 yard line where they'll start first and 10. Big tackle made on the play there by Merchant Marines. Cover man. And let's take a look at the Merchant Marine offense. As we said, triple option behind quarterback Jervy Aloda. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, you know, for both of these programs we're seeing here, this Coast Guard gets to come out with that offense. We're seeing Joey Armantrout is a player that we really watch kind of grow up he made this start as a freshman as soon as he entered this program this coaching staff was really happy about the player that they had in his upside he's got a strong arm he can make all the throws sometimes he can put a little bit too much confidence in that arm and that's when he gets in trouble my mistake coast guard with the ball on offense first they'll hand it off up the middle to harrison hensley a freshman he takes it out for a gain of about three armin trout a junior from oceanside california just north of san diego you see his numbers there, 5'10", 185 pounds. 16 touchdowns this year, only eight interceptions, and leads the league 275 passing yards per game. Low snap, Armantrout throws the slant, caught by Brooke Desta. Desta across the 30 for a first down to the 33-yard line, and Coast Guard moves the stick, 17-yard gain. Yeah, Brooke Desta, he would be the complement to Tolson Smith for Merchant Marine Academy that we had talked about in the open. He is their big play receiver. Just a little slant route, got the window. Short run up the middle for Coast Guard. But going back to Desta, number 10, who made that catch. Only a sophomore, but he leads his team with 65 receptions. He has been their big play weapon on the outside. Also has over 1,000 yards receiving this year and eight touchdowns. All three of those lead the league. Hurry up offense, Armantrout throws, 
into traffic, and it's caught by Desta, just shy of midfield at the 48-yard line, a gain of 13 and a first down. Yeah, beautiful throw, just layering it right over that linebacker. A little bit of that touch there, you're going to see him. He's got it perfect right over that defender trying to get up there, and you see Desta, who we talked about, such an important part of this passing attack. Armin Trout showing that arm strength and accuracy. He'll throw outside the numbers. It's caught by James Patz, who was tackled at the 41-yard line after picking up 11 and another first down. And this is an offense, Robert, that really wants to move with tempo. We were talking with the coaching staff early in the week. He said, once we get that first down, that first first down, we want to put our foot in the gas. Merchant Marine jumped off sides. It's a run for Hensley for a gain of maybe a yard, but this should be a five-yard penalty against Merchant Marine. Our official, our referee today, I should say, is Nicholas Sabilia. Offside, defense number 54, five-yard penalty, replay first down. One thing that both teams talked about was Coast Guard's trick plays. The defensive coordinator for Merchant Marine said they run more trick plays than any team we've seen all year, and Coast Guard wasn't subtle about it. They're like, we like to take some shots. Uh, right now in this first drive here, they're doing a nice job coming out with some tempo, moving at a nice pace, keeping the football within the kind of the field general of that offense, Joey Amontrout. We've seen Hensley be the running back primarily so far. He missed last week's game at WPI with an injury. First and five, it's Hensley up the middle and bowls his way forward to the 32, about a yard short of the first down. And Harrison Hensley, number 33, who had that carry, he's really an interesting player. Only a freshman out of the state of Florida. You can see he's kind of a big body. And within high school, he was a very versatile player, played Wildcat quarterback, receiver. Checks out of the game here. They said he never played running back. Yep. And he's done very well this year, averaging 137 yards a game rushing, which leads the league. In the backfield now, Amr Badani. Armatrap feeling the pressure, and he tried to throw for Badani. It's incomplete. Coverage on the play by Teddy Brunger. The Heat coming that time off the edge will set up a third down. Yeah, but Badani in the backfield tried to kind of get him out there. Just a little bit of a player route. Nice job there by Brunger, who's going to pick him up in coverage. And he took a hit there, Armitrout, just as he let go. Set up a third down and two. Now, these are teams that don't have 50-yard-plus kickers, so probably four-down territory here, barring some sort of Huge negative play, it's third and two. Fake handoff. This is the backup quarterback, Dennis O'Shea, who runs it up the middle for a first down. Fourth first down this drive, and they bring in O'Shea to run the ball there for the first. Yeah, they kept both him and Amitra in the backfield. See a little bit of a zone read, and the reason why they do that is O'Shea is listed at 6'2", 170, where Amitra is 5'10", 170. So get a little bit of a bigger body in there, but he's staying at quarterback. Armand Trout to the quarterback's left. He'll take the handoff. He'll throw it deep for an open man. Desta, touchdown! 32 yards and Coast Guard trick plays on the board. Using that same formation, though, here they give it to Armand Trout and let their starting quarterback on the run throw it. Desta. Been very active on an opening drive, wide open. Coast Guard had said it was important for them to get off to a fast start after some slow starts the previous years. They did that in that opening drive. Freshman Brennan Holt on for the extra point. Bad snap, kick is down. Oh, O'Shea's gonna have to try to make a play out of it. O'Shea rolling to the right. O'Shea throws into the end zone and it's incomplete. Bobbled the snap and it's a failed extra point. But. Coast Guard drives down the field on its first drive, 85 yards for the score to take a 6-0 lead. We'll step aside. The handoff to Armand Trout. He throws it deep for Brooke Desta, his ninth touchdown of the season, and the Bears take the lead. Back here in New London, you see Merchant Marine head coach Jamison Kroll telling his team, calm down, not the start they wanted. Jamison Kroll in his second season with the Mariners, 12 wins, five losses, took over for longtime head coach Mike Toop, who was the head coach for 17 years at Merchant Marine. Coast Guard led by fourth year head man, as you see Jamison Kroll, 12th season on staff, second year head coach. He had been the offensive coordinator prior to that. 
Coast Guard led by fourth year head coach CC Grant. He's in his 24th season on staff here in New London, and he has led a steady rise for Coast Guard. In 2020, they only played one game. It was against Merchant Marine. They did not win. They were 0 1, 2 8, 3 7, now 5 4, a steady climb. But a win in this rivalry it still eluded him, mm. but his offense has got him off to a good start here today. Doesn't get much better than an 11 play, 85 yard drive that took 3 minutes 41 seconds. Brennan Holt's kick is taken by an up back at the 13 yard line. Out past the 25, lowering his shoulder and driven down at the 27. Is Connor Gaffney, one of the running backs. Now, Merchant Marine goes on offense for the first time with sophomore quarterback Jervy Aloda. Yeah, play both of these quarterbacks, interestingly, out of the San Diego area. Derby taking over this offense for the first time this year. A young player, very nimble on his feet. In previous years, they have not had a quarterback as led this offense, but they're actually going with the player that is being, the backup. despite being the backup as a leader of this offense. Ben Carney will start the game at quarterback. And they hand it off to Cole Simmons, so that's a bit of a changeup. They did not indicate that Carney was going to start. They did tell us that Aloda was injured in the Springfield game two weeks ago, which was their last game. He was injured in that game. Ben Carney will start the game at quarterback. He's a senior from El Paso, Texas, that they're very comfortable with. I've been in this program for many years. As I mentioned, despite being the backup, he's who they call their leader. Handoff over the left side for Cole Simmons, and he's wrapped up after a short gain. He'll set up a third down. Carney, a bigger body, 6'2", 220, a senior, came into that Springfield game, made one pass. It was a 70-yard touchdown to Towson Smith. But you talked about the leadership. He's the guy they look to in, even if he's not playing. He's the backup quarterback this season. You see his relatively modest stats for the year. And it's a handoff up the middle, and they'll be a couple of yards short of the first down. Now, Merchant Marine is a team that loves to go for it on fourth down. They're 26, excuse me, they're 26 out of 40 on fourth down this season, 65% and they're gonna go for it here on fourth and a long yard. Yeah, they feel like once they get inside three yards, that that is a comfortable place for them to be able to try and go for it on fourth, which they are here. From their own 36, it's a pitch. They'll pick up the first down to the 39 yard line, Cole Simmons. Cole Simmons, a little bit more of the short yardage back, getting him out in the edge there. Able to get those big shoulders turned north and south. Pick up just enough for that first down. Nice block out there on the edge. So again, triple option offense for Merchant Marine. They'll hand it off for Simmons up the middle. Their number one option is handing it to the fullback up the middle and their tag team of Cole Simmons and Cesar Gonzalez. Now this is a Merchant Marine offense that's very different from Coast Guard. We saw Coast Guard with the tempo getting down the field. This Merchant Marine County, they would love to just slow this down. The last four years that they've won in this series, they've controlled time of possession. Carney picking his way forward. Carney to the far side of the field to the 40 and driven down at the 35 yard line. Looked like it might even be a broken play. He ends up going for 21 yards. And yeah, there you see some of that wisdom and experience of being in the program. You're right, it looked like maybe it was just not a clean handoff and the ball was bobbled there, but the awareness and just calmness of Carney just to be able to hold on to the football, take a seam, and get a big gain. Six straight runs to start the drive. Here's number seven. It's Simmons, and he spun down after a short game. Cole Simmons, a senior from Montrose, Colorado, the southwestern part of Colorado, averaging just over 80 yards a game this season, has seven touchdowns. He's gotten all the carries for a running back on this drive so far. We mentioned Cesar Gonzalez. He's also a senior. He leads the team in rushing and touchdowns, number one. He's not out there right now. We also have not seen Towson Smith. Simmons, dive play up the middle for a couple. Here comes Towson Smith, number 16, running in off the sideline. We talked about him in the open, Towson Smith, averaging almost 22 yards a catch this season, and he has been on an absolute tear since coming back from a mid-season injury. He's lined up at the bottom of the screen. It's Carney handing it off up the middle to Gonzalez, and a flag is down on the near side. Gonzalez does have the first down, but there's a flag down. Yeah. 
off sides. Defense, number 94. Five yard penalty, first down. So they'll take the penalty for the first down. Just spotted at the 24 yard line. Methodical drive here for Merchant Marine. Smith still lined up at the bottom of the screen. That's another handoff for Gonzalez up the middle, and he dives forward to the 21. And almost kind of a bit of a repeat each first half, about three yards, just kind of set the tone for the drive. To them, within this offense, this is very much kind of a win there on first down. You see the number Smith has put up in his tremendous career. 26 career touchdowns, just a junior from the Sacramento area, Roseville, California. Three weeks ago against WPI, he had an entire season. 14 catches for 324 yards and three touchdowns. Carney keeps. Carney into the open field and tackled inside the five. Well, you would not classify this as a trick play, but having Carney come in and be a running threat is not what we or I think Coast Guard expected here on the open drive. 20-yard run for Carney. Puts it first and goal from the three. Gonzalez, the fullback. He'll get the handoff. Burrow his way forward for the... No, stopped inside the one. There's an injured Coast Guard player in the end zone. It's number 94, William Wolf, one of their top defensive linemen. They'll tend to Wolf in the end zone. Under eight minutes left to go. We're back after this. Sophomore lineman William Wolf was helped off the field. He hails from the D.C. area, Northern Virginia. They've been playing this game for a long time. The Secretary's Cup in its 43rd edition. They've been playing every year since 1981. We mentioned earlier that Merchant Marine has won four in a row. The overall series 36-15 in favor of the Mariners, but the official Secretary's Cup started in 81. And over those last four games, Merchant Marine has averaged 43 points a game in four victories. This is the 12th straight run to start the drive, and it is a touchdown. Cesar Gonzalez plunges into the end zone for his 13th score of the year and it is six to six. Wonder if they just might try to sneak Carney. Said they give it to Gonzalez and kind of rode that right in there with him. Looked like it was a very clean handoff, but you see him just kind of stay with him there. Able to push through. Jackson Tinkus, a junior from Louisiana, is the kicker. His kick is up, it is good. Missed extra point. The difference in the game right now is we near the midway point of the first quarter with Merchant Marine leading Coast Guard 7 to 6. Cesar Gonzalez, senior from the Los Angeles area. 13th touchdown of the year, caps a 12 play, 66 yard drive. All of them running plays. Merchant Marine takes the lead. Merchant Marine, the early lead, 7-6. to six. We mentioned at the top that there are five service academies in the United States. You probably know three of them, Army, Navy, and Air Force. These two schools, who are they? Merchant Marine Academy is in Kings Point, New York. It's just north of, uh, it's on the northern shore of Nassau County, Long Island. They are part of the Department of Transportation. The Coast Guard is located here in New London, Connecticut. They're part of the Department of Homeland Security. Saying, what, what does a Merchant Marine do? Uh, they protect commerce ships at sea. They help with the supply chain for the Navy. The Coast Guard's more search and rescue, uh, rescues out at sea, shipwrecks, things like that. Coast Guard patrolling kind of the police officers out at sea. That's what these two academies do, and these students go on to become official officers in the Coast Guard and the Merchant Marines. And they work together after graduation, but certainly no love lost here today on the football field. Ferry's kick will bounce out of bounds. It'll be a penalty. Take a look at Coast Guard's first drive. It was very effective. Yeah, they were able to come out quickly, pick up a first down, run with tempo. Joey Armantrout doing a nice job getting a couple of receivers involved, including number 10, Brooke Desta. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team 
All the place to the 35-yard line. First down, Coast Guard. They would also then bring in their backup quarterback, number 11, Dennis O'Shea. He would get one run and then a little bit of trickery. Get Armitrat out on the edge, and he would strike down field and hit Destin and put him on the board. Both offenses able to kind of come out and exert their will and get off to the start that they would like. Armin Trout in there at quarterback. A scoring start to this game, almost to the midway point of the first quarter on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. It's a handoff for Harrison Hensley running over the right side, and he's met in the backfield, maybe lost a yard on the play. They're going to do a nice job here by Merchant Marine County. They're going to come off the edge, coming up from the secondary, doing a really nice job of setting the edge. That's Aiden Graham. A freshman linebacker from Allen, Texas, just north of Dallas. Aiden Graham, number 14, finished that playoff. He had a team-high nine tackles in their last game against Springfield. Showing blitz, Armand Trout will keep it up the middle and dive forward for a couple, setting up a third and long. Armand Trout, not a huge running threat, just over 200 running yards this season. And at 5'10", 170, he's not a guy who's going to break tackles and things along those lines. He's known for his arm strength. Here on a third and long, we'll see if Merchant Marine Academy trying to dial up a little bit of pressure here. Showing it off the edge, number 14. And we talked about Graham there. He's showing blitz from the right end position. Here comes a cornerback. Good protection, throw over the middle. And trying to break tackles is Chase Polite, but he comes up short of the first down. It'll be fourth and four. Polite's 13th catch of the season, and Coast Guard will be forced to punt. Uh, just doing a nice thing to try to drop it off underneath, but a good job here at Merchant Marine Academy. You see the defense rallying around. Takes several of them to get him down, but before we can get to that first down marker. The punter for Coast Guard is freshman Matthew Haggerty, averaging about 31 yards a punt this season. Back deep to receive is Danny Ferris for Coast Guard. Or, for, excuse me, for Merchant Marine. Haggerty takes it for the Bears. His kick is a low, wobbly kick that'll bounce at the 36. Take a good Coast Guard bounce out of bounds inside the 30. Beautiful day for college football here in New London, Connecticut. We've got a big one coming up later this afternoon in South Florida. Check that panhandle of Florida. Miami at Florida State, 3.30 today on ABC. Florida State right in the hunt for the college football playoff. Talk about rivalries. Mm. Don't want to potentially re-emerging. Right yeah. <laughs> Don't want to say wide right or wide left, excuse me, in that rivalry. But Florida State having a big year. So it's Carney back out there at quarterback for Merchant Marine, and it certainly appears that he will be the quarterback today, unless for some reason they bring a load off the bench, which would seem a, a little unlikely at this point. Gonzalez took the carry for no gain, maybe a yard. Merchant Marine Academy did, did it was finals last week, so they actually had a bye week last week. So maybe enough time for a, a load of maybe to heal. They had said he was not 100% here, but a great opportunity for the senior. Carney, number four, get these snaps. Over the left side, Gonzalez falls forward to the 34. You see on the far sideline all the Merchant Marine Academy cadets. As you said, they were off this week. They had school break, and all, all of them came back early so they could be bussed up from Long Island for this game. What a scene that is over on the far side. They all do push-ups after every score, and much to their delight, they've been getting a lot of push-ups in the last four years. It's Cole Simmons in there at fullback. Carney back to pass. First pass of the game caught by Towson Smith at the 40. Spinning forward to the 42 for a first down. That's a part of Smith's game that's really kind of evolved. Robert, you and I have had the opportunity to do this game the last two years. He was kind of the deep threat. This season, they've been utilizing him more underneath, and he's shown great ability to kind of escape tackles and get yards after the catch, but a good job here by Coast Guard. You can see the first defender miss, but the second one is going to get in there. Nico Berrios will be able to bring him down. First pass of the game. This is a handoff for Simmons. We mentioned Smith had an injury in late September, early October. He's back to full strength now. He missed two games. 
Since he's come back in three games, 23 catches, 489 yards, and five touchdowns. It's pretty quiet against Coast Guard last year. Two catches, 48 touchdowns, but the go-ahead touchdown reception. Yeah, I mean, Coast Guard feels like they've contained him the last two years, but still five catches, two touchdowns, over 100 yards. So even when he's contained, he's, he can be dangerous. Big hole for Simmons. And takes it out to midfield where it'll be third and two. And right here in the third and two, we've already seen it when they were on their side of the field. This is two down territory for them inside three yards. Simmons, the setback again. He'll get the handoff and he'll pick his way forward for a first down to the 47 with Merchant Marine in the white jerseys leading Coast Guard in the Powder Blues seven to six. Yeah, you kind of said it right, he kind of picked his way. Usually they hit it on those uh, downhill kind of dive plays, but a good job with his patience there. Knew what he needed to get, but a little bit of a crease open up, able to pick up that first down. This is the fifth game Carney, the quarterback, has played in this year. It only attempted 20 passes coming in. And the 13th game of his career. Play action. Carney looking deep. Throws it near side. Incomplete. Wanted Smith down the middle. Instead went for Zach Olmeyer. A little bit overthrown. Yeah, Logan Morris, one of the captains for that Coast Guard defense, doing a nice job. Using Tolan Smith there as a decoy. He pulls two defenders. Trying to get that out to the edge. But you see number 17, Logan Morris, playing his responsibility there in coverage to take away that route as well. Morris, a captain, a senior from Hubbard, Texas, about an hour south of Dallas. Handoff, no, Carney keeps. And sp spins forward to the 45-yard line again, and two will set up a third and long. Yeah, Logan Morris once again coming up from that safety spot. Coach said he does an outstanding job talking about Morris and just kind of putting in his film time, studying. Had a shoulder and neck injury in the midseason, missed a couple of games. Came back last week against WPI with seven tackles, one of them for a loss. Third and eight. Play action. Carney throws near side. Caught by Towson Smith, 35. And Smith out of bounds for a first down right at about the 30-yard line. And one of the things about Smith, he's just not only a talented player, good speed. He grew up, he's a coach's son, dad coach high school football, and really, and especially now as a junior, really polished route runner. The coverage is there. Does a nice job of kind of a little bit of a move inside and able to create that separation to the outside and picking up the first. How hard is it to stop that when you're devoting so much to that fullback dive? Well, that's what makes him kind of so dangerous. Usually you think we just got to stop the run, mm -hmm. but you have this big play weapon on the outside, and it really kind of holds those safeties. Pitch left for Simmons. Backs his way forward to the 24, gain a six. Describes Simmons as a, a downhill runner, a short yardage type guy, number 42. But you figure, you know, you got to put eight guys in the box to try to stop this option attack, and that leaves a lot of options for Smith on the outside. And off Simmons. Flag down. Oh, threw that right into the scrum. Uh, he almost, he almost, <laughs> it's like a, a cornhole throw there. He got it right into the, to the hash mark. I'm going to try to have the second strongest arm in the field. <laughs> Here's the call from Nicholas Sabilia. Personal foul. Face mask, number 90 of the defense. Half the distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. So that'll be about a 10-yard penalty. Take it to the 10-yard line. As Merchant Marine looking for two touchdowns and two drives. Put it right at the 10, first and goal. <laughs> Merchant Marine on the season, averaging 31 points a game. And it's a handoff for Simmons. He'll get about four of those yards. Coast Guard is last in the league in allowing rushing yards, 212 a game. They're also last in overall yards allowed. So they've got to find an answer defensively for this rushing attack. Well, you had talked about uh, Springfield kind of being a program that's one of the top. They run a very similar offense yes. to Merchant Marine. And Earlier this year, Coast Guard really struggled in facing the same attack when they played Springfield. Looks like it was Carney on the keep to the three. Yes, 
it's such an unusual offense to see in this day and age. And they had hope, you know, the, the hope was even though they had lost that game against Springfield that they would pull some lessons from seeing that offense. But here early on, struggling defensively to stop. Simmons over the left side. Oh, the city's down at the one yard line. Looked like he might have scored. It'd be fourth down from the one. And Merchant Marine is definitely going to go for it. Jamison Cole signaling the play in from the sideline. See Simmons here working to the edge, and it did not look like his knee went down there. Quick snap, Simmons, touchdown. Cole Simmons, one from one yard out, his eighth of the season, and it's 13 to six. And leaving no doubt on that one. Just on the dive, just getting it to Simmons, lowering that shoulder, but a nice job up front, just creating space. And they're going to go for two here. They kicked an extra point on their first drive. Now they'll go for two. Simmons still in there behind Carney. Carney keeps. And he did not get there. So the run fails, and it's now 13 to 6. After a five and a half minute drive, 11 plays, 72 yards. And Merchant Marine, two drives, two touchdowns. Cole Simmons sh just short on the previous run. They give it to him, and then here, he missed on the two points, and here there was Simmons kind of punching it in. So, Merchant Marine, as they'll get the push-up parade started here, 13, or 90 degree elbows, gentlemen. 23 plays, 139 yards, no punts. When you gotta do push-ups after scores, you're probably not all that upset when they miss a two-pointer. Correct. But like we said, the last four years, Merchant Marine has scored 56, 24, 49, and 41 points against Coast Guard. And, and that, I think that's where the game is going to be decided for Coast Guard. They have to find a way to stop Merchant Marine, something they haven't done in several years. George Ethan Ferry, the punter, will kick it away. End over end kick taken by David Bolin just outside the 20. And he takes it out to the 33 yard line. You look at the last five meetings between these two schools. Back in 2018 was Coast Guard's last win. That was in Kings Point, 26-12. Since then, it's been an offensive onslaught for Merchant Marine. Interestingly, that 2020 year, the COVID year, they only played one game, both teams. Their entire season was canceled except for this game, which Merchant Marine won 24-21. So they finished the year 1-0. And you know, you look at Jameson Kroll, we talked to CC Grant about it. You know, they struggled back then. They didn't win a game that year. The next year they went two and eight, oh and six in the league as Armin Trout will start the drive and he'll keep it himself over the left side. CC Grant had a very, uh, we'll, we'll revisit this point in the second quarter. This is the end of the first quarter. We'll start the second quarter by talking about the recruiting the Coast Guard's done to build their program back up. 15 minutes in the books, Merchant Marine 13, Coast Guard six, a lot of action in that first quarter. The 43rd annual Secretary's Cup from New London, Connecticut. Mariners lead the Bears by a touchdown. Big crowd on hand here in New London, Connecticut for the Secretary's Cup. It's Merchant Marine leading Coast Guard 13 to six during the quarter break. They handed out the Superintendent's Trophy, which is the head-to-head -head competitions in athletics between Merchant Marine and Coast Guard. Coast Guard has dominated that. They've won the last nine. Merchant Marine hasn't won in 10 years. That's Michael Johnston holding the trophy. He is the Coast Guard Superintendent, Coast Guard Academy. But on the football field, it has been Merchant Marine four years in a row. Coast Guard is trying to change that. Robert Lee, Craig Hobbard, our entire terrific ESPN crew with you from Cadet Memorial Field on the shores of the Thames River in New London, Connecticut. Brilliant sunshine here today on a Saturday afternoon in mid-November. Veterans Day this weekend, and these two service academies getting after it on the field once again for the 43rd year in a row in the Secretary's Cup. Second down and 10 for Coast Guard. Coast Guard's in the 
white blue jerseys. Merchant Marine is in the white jerseys. Showing blitz off the edge, movement before the play. Armantrout fumbled the ball, it's on the ground. It's picked up by a lineman at the 30. There's a flag down on the near side. I think it's going to be a false start against the right side of the Coast Guard line. I see that. Look like he might have got drawn off. Drawn off. Yep. You're Offsides. Right. Defense number 14. Five yard penalty. Replay the down. You called it Aiden Graham. You see him with 14 coming up there, and he kind of drew the tackle to move. That's where they get the call. He just kind of lost the handle. I think that was probably a fumble, as I'm not sure his arm was moving forward. His lineman picked it up anyways, and they end up picking up five yards on the play with the offsides. Well, yeah, and that penalty was big because it got him out of a third and third and long situation mm -hmm. here now, much more second and manageable. Coast Guard took the first drive of the game and won 11 plays, 85 yards for a score. Bears punted on their second drive. Armand Trout quick throw into the flat for Desta. He's rocked. Is it an incomplete pass? Is it a fumble? It's incomplete. Incomplete big hit on the edge by Joseph Franco. Outstanding job there by Franco of reading. They're just going to try to quickly get it out to the edge to Desta. And Franco sees it. And before that ball even seems to leave Armand Trout's hand, Franco is already kind of bearing down, makes a big hit. And I'll tell you what, looked like he may have had that start to make a turn the field, but lucky there. Two plays in a row, they put the ball on the ground. And still, though, maintaining possession here in his third down. Franco, a senior cornerback from Staten Island. Snap back to Armitrout, looking deep. Throws far side into traffic. It's incomplete. Intended for James Pats. It'll be fourth down. And Coast Guard will punt. The Mariners able to get a little bit of a pressure up front. You're going to see their big number 68 pushing it back a little bit. Not able to kind of step into a little bit too much on that. Receiver does an outstanding job there of trying to go up. Pats of trying to get it, but just too high. Caleb Green, number 19, there on the coverage. As Armand Trout tried to feed it between two Merchant Marine defenders, or Chessie was there up front applying the pressure. Here's Haggerty for the punt from his own 25. Low end over end kick will bounce at the 28 and take a huge Coast Guard bounce forward inside the 10 yard line to the eight. There are five federal service academies. Our academy. The Merchant Marine Academy located in Kings Point, New York, North Shore of Long Island. They start the drive with what else? A running play over the right side out past the 10 to the 15. That one to Gonzalez. Cole Simmons, he needs a little bit of a break. Mm. That first quarter, he had 16 touches. <laughs> for 53 yards and a score. Ran the ball 16 times, never for more than six yards. A busy quarter for Simmons. This is Gonzalez up the middle, spun down at the 18 where it appears he does have a first down. How does Coast Guard start slowing down this Merchant Marine offense? Well, here's the game within the game. You know, sometimes you talk to Coach during the week and say, what's the key? The, you know, we've got to hold on to the football. For Merchant Marine County, the Mariners, they said we have to win time of possession. Over the last five years, the only game that they lost to Coast Guard, they split time of possession. The last four years when they won, they dominated it. And early on here, that is what they are doing. That first quarter, Robert, 10 minutes and three seconds, mm. they held the football, able to work their way up the field. Coast Guard not only needs to stop them, but they need to get their offense mm. back on the field. Well, in the first quarter, Merchant Marine ran 27 plays, the Coast Guard's 13, so they're just wearing on this defense. Three yard runs, four yard runs, pitch for Gonzalez. Stopped after a short game. That was big here, because now, we said anytime they kind of get within the third and let three or less, you feel like you're, they're likely operating in a two down territory. Here, they're outside of that. They're on their side of the field. It's a big third down for this Coast Guard defense. You see the difference in rushing yards already, 118 to 14. Carney play action, all sorts of time, throws over the middle. Incomplete, double coverage. Towson Smith, maybe triple coverage on the play. Ryan Vigo, number 21 there to break it up, and Merchant Marine will punt. The junior still almost came down with it. And he is their playmaker. He knew where he wanted to go with it, Carney. 
He's going to put it up there and kind of gave him a chance to make a play, and he almost did. But as you mentioned, two defenders there able to kind of break him up. And we just talked about it. Getting this Mariners offense off the field, stopping them from dominating time of possession, getting their offense back. Also on the coverage, Nico Berrios. George Ethan Ferry, the punter on for the first time. Back deep to receive Ezra Tetralt. He calls for the fair catch. Makes it at the 40-yard line. Good field position for Coast Guard. When we return, 12 and a half to go. First half, Merchant Marine by seven. Coast Guard back on offense down 13 to six to start the second half against KP, Kings Point, the Merchant Marine Academy. It'll be Armand Trout on first and 10. Good field position from the 40. Low snap. And a handoff for no gain over the right side. Maybe a loss on the play. James Wheel in the fourth. We talked about CC Grant, the head coach of Coast Guard. He talked to us about recruiting, and you're as plugged in as anybody in high school football recruiting. There is no transfer portal. Guys don't transfer into the Coast Guard. You don't turn the program around by doing that. You've got to recruit freshmen and develop them over several years to lift the program as Armand Trout will take the second down snap. Pressure's on. He'll run up the middle, go over to the left side. Armand Trout trying to turn the corner flag down. Armand Trout out of bounds near midfield. But it's such a different experience in trying to recruit and rebuild a program. Yeah, Coach Grant said, hey, we are a, re a recruit and develop program. And you're right. They got to bring these players in. That's really kind of been their struggle the last few years. They've been so young, and they still are young. Only six seniors in this program. Out of 75 players on the roster. Penalty coming up here. Let's get the call. Holding. Offense number 42. 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. That'll set them back, but they really free focus their recruiting efforts. Yeah, well, because you're looking for specific young men. You're obviously, this is not for everybody because you are going into service. A lot of these young men, especially for the Mariners, some of them next week, if they don't play in a bowl game, will be on ships. Right. You know, uh, starting to uh, kind of learn in that aspect of their time here. So this is not for everybody. They hand it off Armentrout, he'll throw, and he one hops it in. Did he make the catch? No. Chase Polite as they tried that handoff to the quarterback and then pass action again. And then going back, you know, when Coach Grant had first taken over as head coach, you can see there Armentrout on the move, just a little bit underthrown there. He would take his coaching staff and they would work kind of these mega camps with other bigger schools, but they kind of refocused that this year, say, you know what, let's just go to the other service academies, Army. Navy, Air Force, because there we're going to see like-minded young men who are in this mindset of wanting to also go into service and have greater success. So I think they're starting to change their focus a little bit, and that will pay dividends for them in recruiting. Armand Trout on third and long into traffic. Destas got it, but he's just short of the first down. He's a couple of yards short at the 48-yard line. A big gain there, but it'll set up fourth and short. Another nice throw here by Armitage. He's going to kind of drop it in that window. Just drop it right between a few defenders, but a really nice job there defensively by Holler of not allowing him to pick up that first. They're going to go for it here on fourth and two from their own 48-yard line. Look at that depth, though. He made quick kick this. He will. This is the 10th time he's done that this year, and this is going to be just as successful, maybe. Oh, no. <laughs> Six of his nine punts had landed inside the 20-yard line. That one at about negative one. They almost pulled it off, though. <laughs> Very close. Yeah, I mean, that what that hit at about the 19, Robert, and just rolled and rolled and rolled. You see number 83 just hustling and just could not get mm. there in time. What do they say? Game of inches? Right. And a lot of these Coast Guard players came part of a great class from Naps, the Navy Prep School. Armin Trout, Tyler Jones, their top defensive end, Nico Berrios, as we called his name several times. Ethan Lasher all played at Navy Prep School the COVID year. It was a great recruiting class. They're all juniors now, and they're the backbone of this team. First and 10, Merchant Marine. Carney running the option right, pitches it. Strung out for no gain, maybe a loss on the play. Hayden Red, his first carry, a senior from Nevada. And Hayden Anderson, number 32, doing a really nice job there on the edge, kind of force the quarterback. You're going to see Carney come down the line here. You're going to see number 30 come up field. He's going to kind of force him to bubble it. 
Get a little bit too much depth there. And as you mentioned, Red comes up there and helps them out. Well played, because stopping them on first down, not allowing them to get that three, four yard pickup to really set this offense back. Carney option again, low pitch. And not much doing once again, similar play. It's Hayden Red again for maybe a yard or two. It'll set up a third and long. Both defensives have started to assert themselves here after each team gave up a touchdown on the first drop. Yeah, so important to set back that Mariners offense on first down if you're Coast Guard defensively. They've been able to do that here. Put him just where they don't want to be on a third and long. Obviously, the player here to watch is number 16. Carney, play action. Throws far side. Caught Towson Smith first down. Out past the 30. There's the player you talked about. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage, and he picks up just enough to move the sticks. Yeah, he's such a good route runner. I mean, he knew where he needed to get. He's going to get upfield right past the change. You see him kind of drop those hips, create just a little bit of separation. Carney able to kind of make the throw, pick up that first. You, you knew he was going to get it yet. Try to stop him. Right, <laughs> right. It's a handoff over the left side. Cole Simmons to the 36. Yeah, Cole Simmons is putting in a lot of work today. Nice job up front, you know. Jamison Kroll, he, he's the head coach. Last year, he was holding double duty as the O-line coach and the head coach. This year, brought in another coach to kind of take over those duties because it was just a lot to handle. But that O-line here doing a nice job. Carney, straight drop, throwing deep far side. Oh, incomplete. Towson Smith tried to make the over-the-shoulder catch, and it was incomplete. Yeah, Hayden Anderson just did a nice job. He came in, he leads his team in interceptions with five and pass breakups and just a beautiful thrown ball. But you see number 32, he does not give up on it. He keeps his hand in there. He's looking back for the football. Really well played there by number 32. Usually that's a play that the Mariners offense is used to making. Just a nice throw, but defensive back does not give up. Anderson Jr. from Washington, North Carolina, pitch for Simmons, strung out. He's going to be stopped short of the first down, about three yards shy, maybe four yards. It'll be fourth down. And I believe Merchant Marine will. It's definitely fourth and five. Yeah, I mean, this would be where I think they would punt. It looks like they're going to go. See here, maybe if they come out, just maybe try to see if Coast Guard will gift them a first down. And Jump, maybe see if they can draw him off. They've got to get to the 41-yard line from their own territory, fourth down. And they may be just trying to draw them off sides. Down to seven on the play clock. Yep, down to two, and they'll call a timeout. It's worth a shot. Coast Guard showing good discipline there, unsurprisingly. A little, a little shaky there. <laughs> there a little bit of movement. They, they held, though. So Merchant Marine will presumably, we're going to step aside for a break. We'll see if they decide to end up going for it or if they punt it away when we return. Beautiful day here in New London, Connecticut. Coast Guard Academy cadets enjoying today's game, although their team is down 13 to 6. Each team scored on its first drive of the game. Jamison Kroll's team, Merchant Marine, has since scored another touchdown to lead it 13 to 6, but face a fourth down and about five here and will likely punt from their own 36-yard line. The 43rd Annual Secretary's Cup. Merchant Marine has beaten Coast Guard four years in a row. You see on the back of those Coast Guard jerseys the name Monroe on all of the jerseys, and we'll have more about that at halftime. That honors Douglas Monroe. A Coast Guard officer back during World War II. It's a great story. We'll have that at halftime, which is about 8 minutes, 54 seconds from now. Fourth down for Merchant Marine. George Ethan Ferry on to punt it away. Oh, it's a fake. Going nowhere. Coast Guard shuts it down for a loss of five. Teddy Brunger, the linebacker, ended up trying to run, and he lost yards on the play. They're just going to snap it up to him. He's got two lead blockers, but Coast, mm -hmm. job, the Coast Guard does an outstanding job of seeing it, getting upfield, quickly taking that out. They're going to start here with outstanding field position. The Bears were not fooled. Alex Schilling, number 23 in there. We'll see here off of that big play on special teams if they're going to go ahead and take a shot here. 
So a terrific field position for Coast Guard. The Bears from the 31-yard line looking for a tying score. Joey Armentrout, hot early, has cooled off quite a bit. The junior quarterback from Oceanside, California, north of San Diego, back to pass. Good protection, throws far side on a line, and it is caught at the 25. We've heard about that arm strength, and he, it's probably a 30-yard throw to the far sideline. Yeah, from that inside hash to outside the numbers there, a little bit of that arm strength. They feel like he can make all the throws. He's shown that. The spot of there, number two, but had he turned his head around, he probably could have maybe even had a break up there. Pats on the catch. Picking his way forward, Harrison Hensley. That's the first down inside, close to the 20 yard line. You know, we talked about those recruiting stories for Coast Guard, and I thought Harrison Hensley, a freshman from the Tampa area, had one of the most interesting ones. They set him up with Eli Maurer, who's a class of 16 Coast Guard graduate. He runs a military ship in the St. Pete area. They had Hensley go visit the ship along with some other prospective recruits, see what it was like to be a true Coast Guard officer. As Armentrout rolls out to the right, throws to the sideline, wide open man, Tetralt. He's inside the 15. Tetralt's first catch of the game, and he's got close to first down yardage at the 11. Now usually, uh, you're going to see here, these snaps have been consistently low. Nice job there, Armentrout, getting it and then on the move, and then see Paz making sure that he was inbounds and turning up. It was a first down, running it up the middle is James Wheeler, the fourth. He takes it for a positive gain to the six. As Coast Guard knocking on the door after snuffing out the fake punt at about the 30-yard line. They can get a first down here inside the one. It's second down and five. Past the midway point of the second quarter. Armentrout out of the gun. With Wheeler to his right, Armitrout rolls out right. Armitrout looking into the end zone, gets away from one man. Armitrout throws across his body. Through the uprights, flag down. Flag down as he threw that ball through the uprights. Does not count for a field goal. Could get a roughing the pass there. Oh, that's what the referee's signaling. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number 55, half the distance. Automatic first down. Jack Temple, the best defensive lineman for Merchant Marine. Called for the personal foul, will move the ball to the three yard line. Yeah, Armin Trout trying to get out on the edge, looking for somebody. He's managing to throw back over the middle across his body, and as he does, he kind of takes a hit right at the sideline. So spotted at the three yard line, first and goal. Chance for Coast Guard to try to tie the game with a touchdown. Hensley, the back to the left of Armin Trout. Armentrout keeps, fighting his way forward for a couple of yards. Good tackle made on the play by number 49, C.J. Livesey. Yeah, tried to use a little QB lead there with Hensley, who's, who's a bigger back, a little close to six foot, 200 pounds, but nice job there for the Mariners' defense, getting off blocks, being able to bring him down. Hensley checks out of the game. Sophomore Glenn Patrick, number 39, comes in. Patrick is toted the load, rushing the ball the last couple of weeks with Wheeler and Hensley banged up. It's Patrick. Into the end zone for a touchdown. Glenn Patrick's second score of the year. Pulls Coast Guard within one. James Holler, he's going to get in there, get quick penetration, but he's not able to maintain his footing. You see Patrick's able to stay on his feet, and just take it in. And Coast Guard able to take advantage off of that special teams play. The Mariners tried to go for it. The Bears quickly shut it down. Opportunity here to tie it up. On for the extra point, Brennan Holt, freshman from Rochester, Michigan. Good snap, good hold this time, and it's up and good. 6.34 left to go, first half. Coast Guard takes the short field, and it's Glenn Patrick, a sophomore from the Gulf Shore of Alabama, taking it in for a second score of the season, and it's tied at 13. Good one here in the Secretary's Cup, tied at 13, the Merchant Marine Academy. Very proud institution, some of their famous alumni. You see a couple of 
astronauts Mark Kelly and Elliot C, a former Denver Broncos linebacker Joe Rizzo back in the 70s. Robert Kiyosaki, an author you would think, Merchant Marine. You would think taking on the uh, C would be enough for two of them. <laughs> they had, had to go all the way into space. It was, it was very interesting that, you know, some of these players, they could be on a, a ship headed to the Indian Ocean next week. I mean, it, it's unbelievable the sort of different college experience than what we're used to seeing, uh, you know, maybe at the Division I level where it's football all the time. Want to kick it away, Brennan Holtz. Gets a good hold of this one and crushes it through the end zone for a touchback. Well, on the other side, Coast Guard has a very famous athlete associated with it as well. Otto Graham, who was an NFL Hall of Famer, a tremendous player, quarterback for the Cleveland Browns back in the 40s and the 50s, was Coast Guard's head coach back during the early 60s. You see his career numbers uh, with some of the guys Cleveland's run out there, quarterback this year. They might wish they still had Otto uh, taking the snaps. Brown's hanging in there. Ferocious defense. Miles Garrett, frightening. First and 10 from the 25 for Merchant Marine. And what have you seen from the Coast Guard defense as they've started to stiffen up against this rushing attack? Yeah, doing a nice job and just kind of getting off blocks, playing near assignment, and really kind of just stifling the Mariners on first down. That first quarter, Merchant Marine Academy possessed the ball for 10 minutes. Here thus far, only four. They've done a nice job of kind of getting them off the field. It's Gonzalez running over the right side for a short game. Set up a third and about four. So for Coast Guard defensively, they got about two yards to play with. They can kind of hold them here to no gain or one yard, could probably force another punt. And we talked about that. You talked about the time of possession, but Merchant Marine basically ran two to one plays over Coast Guard in the first quarter. Coast Guard is right at the ship, so to speak, and they'll run it over the right side. Short of the first down, Cesar Gonzalez about a yard short. Decision here for Jamison Kroll from his own 34. Yeah, I did think the only decision is what play they're going to run. Yes. You know, I mean, they went for a big punt right. on their own end of the field. Fourth and one, I think he believes in his offense that they should pick this up. What a huge stop this would be for Coast Guard if they were able to stop them short. Gonzalez just got it with the second and third efforts of the 36. Had to bring his uh, lunch pail with him for that first down. That was not easy. It would get off tackle, though. Gonzalez, he's played in very many of these games. Able to break through one tackle, keeping both hands on the football, able to work upfield. See, immediately off the edge, he's going to get contact, and then a little bit of a move there, spinning for that first. Dive play up the middle for four for Gonzalez. You mentioned he's played in these games for several years now. He's a senior back during the COVID year when they only played the one game as a freshman. He had 103 yards and a touchdown. Last year, 20 carries, 95 yards in another Merchant Marine victory. He's been kind of working in tandem today with number 42, Cole Simmons. Gonzalez over the left side. And now they're starting to pick up a little bit of that momentum that they had offensively in the first quarter where it was three yards, three yards get themselves either third down on picking up a first or getting themselves to a fourth and short where they feel very comfortable going for it. And that's the rhythm that they're back in here on this drive. Gonzalez, a senior all the way from Norco, California, just east of Los Angeles. He's been getting most of the carries here in the second quarter. He'll pick up a first down and more. Cesar Gonzalez across midfield to the 45 yard line. That offensive line is actually really without one of their leaders, a senior, Rudy Rupel. They're going to do a great job just cutting low. We see the center, the, both guards, just getting tremendous push there. You mentioned Rupel, a four-year starter who went down in the second week of the season. He's out for the year at right guard. Good pickup of 12 for Gonzalez. This time it'll be Simmons churning his way forward to the 38. Seven yards on first down. You know, and, and talking about just kind of sacrifice a lot of these young men make. That right guard, number 63, Chris Sinoco, he was on the defensive line when the year started, and they lost Rudy Rupel to an injury, and he went and volunteered, say, hey, you know what? I'll move over. I'll play offense. And since week four, he's been a starter. Coming off an ACL injury last year. Played well along that O-line. Simmons again, first down inside the 35. 
Yeah, you know, with these kind of these dives, working in between the tackles, that's where this Mariners offense has been most successful. You remember those two earlier drives in this quarter where they stalled? It was trying to get on the edge with the option. And, and the Coast Guard's done an outstanding job of taking away that option game out on the edge. They're still struggling, though, to kind of stop them in between the tackles. Nine straight runs to start this drive. It's red in motion. It's another inside handoff for Simmons, breaking tackles. Simmons driving his way forward, refuses to go down inside the 30 at the 28. Another gain on first down of five yards. Yeah, it's just like chaos in the middle. You're going to watch that handoff. You kind of got to get out of the way a little bit. Carney, you see bodies. A little bit of kind of tight rope in there by number 42, Simmons, to get to the second level. Nothing fancy, like you said. They're not running the option, pitching it to the outside. They are handing it off on the fullback dive with success on this drive. Carney keeps. Strung out. Ripped down at the 29 as forward progress is stopped. Again, you're seeing it out on the edges is where they're struggling. Uh, you know, sometimes you see the old expression, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I'd keep working it downhill until Coast Guard shows they can stop it. Once again, they try to get Carney out on the edge. Very well played. Those defense, those corners and linebackers doing a great job coming up and setting the edge. Logan Morris, number 17, finished him off. Ethan Lasher, the first hit. Inside handoff for Simmons, and this will set up a fourth down where Merchant Marine will go for it from the 28-yard line. Yeah, now that all of a sudden, though, this drive kind of Loses a little bit of momentum off of that second down play. There was a timeout called with a minute 36 left to go in the half. So Coast Guard calls a timeout to try to preserve some time on the clock if they get the ball back. That's a good move there because Merchant Marine could have run it down to about a minute to go. And if they didn't get the fourth down, there wouldn't be that much time for Coast Guard. And it's a good opportunity to talk about, okay, this is a fourth and five, right? And so you're going to have to, what, what are you talking about in the huddle? Where is number 16? Mm -hmm. How are we going to stop number 16? We cannot let him get past the chains and create separation. And if you're a defensive lineman, and likely, you know, this is where they may put it up to him. You can't get to the quarterback. Get in, get your hands up, try to disrupt the throw. So college game day in Athens, Georgia this morning. And coming up tonight on ESPN, Ole Miss and the two-time defending champion Georgia Bulldogs between the hedges in Athens. 7 o'clock start on ESPN. We, and you, we were talking before the game. We're a little biased. We do this game every year. you got to get college game day here. Oh, Two weird. years from now, let's make it happen. Veterans Week here at the Coast Guard Academy. Beautiful setting and background of the Thames River. It doesn't get much better than this. Fourth and five. Carney play action. Plenty of time. Carney rolls out to the right. Throwing deep, far sideline. Coming back for the ball. Oh, what a catch. Inside the 10, there's a flag down. Flag down. Towson Smith came back to the ball, but I think it's going to be pass interference. I think, he's going to, I think it may go against Smith. I agree. I think Smith created that separation. I think he pulled the defender down so he can make the catch. He's pleading his case. <laughs> Jamison Kroll's out on the field, pleading his case, too. Pass interference. Offense, number 16. 15-yard penalty. Replay, fourth down. So it was a 23-yard gain inside the 10. It'll instead be fourth down and long. Uh, initially there, the coverage is there. Forces Carney on the move. And listen, that, you know, in real time, it looked like he did it. He really kind of, you're going to see there with that left arm and that right arm, he just kind of pushes him back and kind of allows himself to kind of work back to the football. I think that's the right call. And after kind of, after just moving the football downfield, kind of getting back into rhythm, they took that one play to the edge. They got the stop, bowed up there in the middle on that third down. Now here to losing ground. And, Gonna have to punt it away. Good stop here for Coast Guard. Fourth and very long. They'll have about a minute and a half to try to drive down the field for a go-ahead score before halftime. Huge booming punt. High spiraling kick bounces inside the 10. Sideways into the end zone for a touchback. We'll take another timeout. Minute 20 to go before halftime. Tied at 13. Back for the end of the first half. Tie game.
happening here in New London, Connecticut. The Secretary's Cup, Coast Guard and Merchant Marine tied at 13 and a chance for Coast Guard to go up into halftime with a minute 20 to go with the ball at their own 20 yard line. Merchant Marine won the opening toss and deferred to the second half. So they will get the ball to start the second half. Coast Guard would love to score here right before halftime. Well, with the time they're working, it's really important to kind of get that first first down and they can really start to run with a little bit of tempo. They'll have plenty of time. Each team, two timeouts left. Armatrout throws the slant, incomplete. Intended for Amr Badani, flag down. It's gonna be unnecessary roughness. First time we've caught out Badani's name, a five foot seven receiver from Fairfax, Virginia. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense number 14, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Aiden Graham, the freshman linebacker, called for unnecessary roughness. Yeah, gonna try to hit. No, it's definitely not 14. Over the middle. He was rushing inside. It looked like number 35, actually. Yeah, that was Chad Holla, the safety. Yeah, looking at him as a kind of a defensive player. 14 was rushing the passer. It's 35. Holler, the safety, called for 15-yard penalty. Armand Trout takes the snap, throws deep far side. Cut inside the 40-yard line. No, incomplete. Out of bounds. Out of bounds. Nice throw by Armand Trout. It was intended for James Pats. And a really nice job there by Pats of adjusting and getting up, but just momentum taking him out of bounds. You see. Pats does a nice job. Look, he was in. I mean, that looks like a. Oh, no, he lost the oh, ball at the end. Yeah, lost the ball as he went to it. the ground. So he they, did get the foot down. And as he's going down, nice job. We've seen defensive backs staying, staying after the play, and that's Caleb Green, the sophomore. Sets up a second down with a minute 12 to go. Plenty of time for Armour Trout. A lot of room up the middle. And slides down under Aiden Graham at the 40-yard line. Clock running now under a minute remaining. That's Third down. Sharp-looking slide. Usually mm. we see sometimes quarterbacks struggle. I'm in trap. Nothing there. He sees a window. He's just going to tuck it and go. And the last second does a nice job just getting down. Low to the ground, right? Five foot ten. Armin Trout flushed out of the pocket. Blitzes on. Throws it out of bounds. It'll be fourth down with 43 seconds left. CeCe Grant, the head coach of Coast Guard, will send out the punt team. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. It's interesting because Merchant Marine, let, let's say they have 70 yards to go with 40 seconds left. They're not a team that can just move the ball down the field yeah, in big but chunks. If, if you give them the football right here, though, and they, the, got, yes. they got number 16 right, talent, right. you do not want it, I, I think, right here. We'll Could also be a quick kick. Yeah, look at, the, look how much, look at the depth here that Armand Trout has. He's, he's back much further than he would be if he was in a shotgun formation. So we mentioned he's quick kicked it 10 times this year, and he will do so again. And there's nobody back deep to receive. This ball's gonna bounce all the way inside the 10, and this is gonna be inside the five. Down at the one yard line. Terrific job by Armand Trout and the cover team. With 34 seconds left. 59-yard punt for Armand Trout. It came close last time that he did that quick kick. Does it again, and this time they're able to get down there. And, ooh, it doesn't get up. any better than that. No, well executed. It's an excellent job by the special teams of Coast Guard, and now Merchant Marine will. Well, they don't really have room to take a knee here, but you no, figure they'll but just run it up the middle I once, mean, and maybe that'll be the end of the half. They fall forward and gain two yards in their <laughs> sleep. <'cause laughs> the get out of bed and, yeah. and gain three yards, right? So it will be Carney with 99 yards to go for a touchdown in 34 seconds. Well, this will get them out to the six-yard line after a encroachment. Nope, false start's going to cost them about a foot and a half. So they'll back it up even more. False start. Offense, number 16. Half the distance to the goal, still first. 18-inch so penalty on Towson Smith. They put it at the half-yard line, and the ball's almost touching the goal line. See if they just let Carney push forward here. It could just be a QB sneak. And ooh, that may cost them nine more inches. <laughs> could be a nine-inch penalty. False start. 
Offense, number 65. Half the distance, still first. Now my elementary school masculines would tell me another one would be a four and a half inch <laughs> penalty if they were to false start again. Also, if there's a penalty in the end zone, it's a safety. So we do not want any sort of holding penalty of any kind here. See if everybody can get off the snap at the correct time. That could be the last play of the first half. It appears it will be, as they don't need to run another play. The clock is running with 20 seconds left. Merchant Marine does not have to run a play. So Coast Guard scored on the first drive of the game on a trick play, a touchdown pass to Desta. They're lining up. They don't have to run another play here. There's only 10 seconds left. Merchant Marine, a long touchdown drive to answer. Kick the extra point to make it 7-6. Merchant Marine, another touchdown late in the first quarter. Coast Guard takes the short field in the second quarter and answers. We're back where we started. 30 minutes in the books. Coast Guard 13. Merchant Marine 13. 43rd Annual Secretary's Cup from New London, Connecticut. We're back with a halftime show right after this. Halftime of the Secretary's Cup, Merchant, Marine, and Coast Guard tied at 13. We have a very special cadet, uh, guest here at the Coast Guard Academy. He is Rear Admiral Michael Johnston. He is the first year superintendent of the Coast Guard Academy. He's also a 1990 Coast Guard Academy graduate. Mike, we appreciate you taking the time. We've talked about the jerseys, the, the powder blue is very sharp in honor of Douglas Monroe. Tell us a little bit about the significance of Monroe and the Medal of Honor. Absolutely, yeah. The, the, uh, the, the Douglas Monroe was our um, uh, Medal of Honor winner, and uh, that is the nation's highest award for valor for the military. And uh, we, 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 this is Veterans Weekend, birthday Marine Corps, and so we wanted to celebrate uh, our Medal of Honor winner, and the, and the uniform is set up in Tropical Blue Long. Uh, and uh, Adidas uh, helped us design this, mm. where where they moved their symbol from the from the, over the heart over to the right side, and so we put the Medal of Honor uh, uh, on the over the heart. We put the Adidas sign uh, over the shoulder, and, and down the down the side of his leg it says Guadalcanal, and uh, down the side of the other leg it says World War II, and on the back, and on the back it says Monroe, and it says the date that he, di he died, uh, gave his final measure, and that was. Uh, uh, September 27th, 1942. And you saw the video in the last segment, Guadalcanal, he saved 500 Marines there in World War II in the South Pacific. Let's talk a little bit about what we're seeing on the field here today, athletics and the role that it plays in the development of character at the Coast Guard. Well, we train leadership, we train character, we train this uh, ability to drive a team, uh, to complete a goal, uh, and, uh, and, and, and service is a, is a cornerstone behind that. And on the field is where we test that. Uh, we test their commitment, we test their ability to sacrifice, and we test their grit. And uh, this is just one of those uh, pivotal moments, uh, games, where we uh, challenge ourselves against a great competitor. Rear Admiral Mike Johnston of the Coast Guard Academy joining us here. We've talked about in the first 30 minutes about the different life of a cadet at the Coast Guard or the Merchant Marine Academy. Give us a little bit of a preview of what happens after these guys graduate from the Coast Guard Academy. They go right into operations. Mm. Uh, they are driving ships. They are saving people. They are uh, catching uh, illegal drugs. Uh, a lot of them, or many of them, go to right to flight school, and some of them enter in the cyber, uh, cyber workforce and really get on the front lines of uh, fighting and defending our nation in a cyber domain. One more thing I gotta ask you, when we talked to the Coast Guard coaches, they said our incoming superintendent, Rear Admiral Johnston, talks to a lot of recruits and he tries to, you know, kind of sell them on the Coast Guard Academy, right? What kind of recruiter would you say you are and what's your success rate? <laughs> are, are you a you guy who closes the deal most of the time? I am the closer. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I do my best. I think uh, the, the Academy is this special jewel, this gem that uh, really is, shines bright, uh, but so few, people know about it and I just want to share that light with a bunch of people because as soon as they know all the work that we do as soon as they realize that we are about uh, saving people saving the planet and really facilitating five point trillion uh, dollars of maritime transportation that is the lifeblood of this nation they get interested you know we thank you for your hospitality you and your staff it's a wonderful environment here in New London we come and love coming back here every other year Rear Admiral Mike Johnston of the Coast Guard Academy the superintendent we thank you for your time second half is coming up. We'll take a look at first half highlights and stats. Thanks, Rob. Tied up at 13. 
sunshine and temperatures in the mid 50s here on this mid-November afternoon in New London, Connecticut. Merchant Marine and Coast Guard tied at 13. We're back here at Cadet Memorial Field. Robert Lee, Craig Harbert back with you. Interesting first half tied up on the scoreboard, but Merchant Marine had a two to one advantage in not only plays run, but time of possession. Well, the game started out, looked like we were in for an offensive explosion. Both offenses were able to come out, exert their will. After that, each defense kind of adjusted a bit for the Merchant Marine Academy, when they were able to kind of keep picking up three yards at a time, get themselves into a third and two or a fourth and three and less, they would pick up the first, dominated time possession in that first quarter. But for the Coast Guard, strong start, strong finish. We'll see how they come out in the second half, led by Joey Armentrout. Let's take a look at the first half highlights, and it was Armentrout featured in the first one, capped off an 85-yard drive. Yeah, it really came out. Moving quick tempo on this play here. They would get Armitrot in the backfield, use a little bit of trickery, get him out on the edge, hit their receiver, Desta downfield. And then the Mariners offense would come out, working that triple option, methodically move down the field, punch it in. At one point, they would miss a two-point opportunity. Here in their own side of the field, they went for it on a fake punt. The Bears defense did a great job of shutting that down. They would capitalize, turn that special teams turnover into points and be able to tie this game up. The push-ups have not been in the 40s so far, but 13-13, we look at the first half stats, fairly even, but a huge time of possession and plays run advantage for Merchant Marine. Second half coming up, Merchant Marine gets the ball to start the second half, and we'll have that when we return, tied at 13 in the 43rd <laughs> annual Secretary's Cup. Chamber of Commerce weather here in New London, Connecticut. A Saturday afternoon, we set to start the second half of the Secretary's Cup. Merchant Marine and Coast Guard tied at 13. Mentioned this is the 43rd year in a row. They've been meeting officially for the Secretary's Cup. Merchant Marine leads 29-13. 52nd meeting overall started back in the late 40s. Of note, Merchant Marine has won four in a row, but what did Coach Jamison Kroll tell us? Nobody cares you won four in a row if you lose this one. So you're only as good as this past season. Merchant Marine will get the ball to start the second half. Craig, give us some things you're looking for here in the second half. Yeah, it's a long year if you don't have those bragging rights. Mm. So every year that renews. I think for the Coast Guard, they got to feel really comfortable. In that first quarter, they let their Mariners offense kind of do what they want. They control time and possession. But in that second quarter, defensively, they did a great job of shutting down the edges, taking away that option out on the edge. I think offensively, they've got to potentially get running back Harrison Hensley in the mix a little bit more. He's very versatile. Player in high school was a Wildcat quarterback. He was a receiver. He may not be 100%. Maybe that's why we're not seeing him utilized as much. And for the Merchant Marine Academy, in between the tackles, working downhill, they were successful throughout that first quarter. That third drive there in the second half, it looked like they were moving downfield. It got stalled. I think they got to stay away from the option on the edge and keep forcing that Coast Guard defensive line to have to hold ground and try to wear them down because I think they've shown a lot of success working, just getting downhill, working that dive between the tackles. Coast Guard 5-4 and four on the year, 4-0 and oh here at home. Merchant Marine 6-2. and two. Merchant Marine could play in a bowl game next week if they're selected to either the ECAC or the New England Bowl, but this is the game circled on everyone's calendar. You know, we talked to Coach Kroll from Merchant Marine Academy. He said, you know, the texts, the emails, they start rolling in towards the end of the week. Guys saying, hey, I'm going to be watching you from the Indian Ocean at 3 o'clock in the morning. It's just things you don't hear in other games. Uh, truly uh, international interest here. Coast Guard will kick it away to start the second half. If you're just joining us, Coast Guard in the powder blue jerseys, Merchant Marine in the white jerseys. These two arch rivals, allies at sea, but rivals here on the football field. Ready to kick it away is Brennan Holt for Coast Guard. Sidewinding kick coming to the near side. It's taken by an up back, almost goes out of bounds at the 10, and he was out of bounds. The kick was definitely going to go out of bounds. Instead, they'll start from the 17 yard line. Would have been smart to kind of let that sail out. But here they're going to come back out. See, just drifting and. <laughs> work to stay in bounds, but they're going to take possession. We thought maybe earlier on the game we might see Jerby Alota, who had been their starting quarterback throughout the year, the sophomore, wound up being the backup, Ben Carney, who's kind of engineered this offense throughout the afternoon. The player has been in this program for many years. 
Cole Simmons, who's in there, had 22 carries in the first half for 76 yards. He'll take the pitch running left. Simmons turns up field for a good pickup on first down out to the 23, a gain of about six. His counterpart, Cesar Gonzalez, had 16 carries in the first half for 55 yards. They each scored a touchdown. They outrushed Coast Guard in the first half, 171 to 31. Coast Guard with a similar advantage, passing the ball. Handoff up the middle, Simmons again. First down to the 29. And Merchant Marine will move the sticks. And that group up front, that center and those two guards, they've just been doing a great job of just creating push. And you see the, the time of possession, the last four years that the Merchant Marine Academy has dominated this series, they've won the time of possession. Simmons again. And we were just running so many plays, and, and we say running specifically, you're running the ball over and over and over again, leaning on that defense. It's in the third and fourth quarter you start seeing the effects. Yeah, and that, you know, that may not be a very glamorous first down, but that's great for, for the Mariners' offense. This puts them right in their sweet spot, try to get another three yards again. And once they kind of get to a fourth and three and under, they'll go for it. Pitch left for Simmons. Running through tackles, spins his way forward to the 36. About three yards short of a first down, it'll be third down. Yeah, I mean, even they keep it on the ground here. They get one or two yards, but don't pick up that first. They're thinking, we, you know what, we're going to go for it. Puts a lot of stress on our defense here to try to have to kind of get a stop here and get this Mariners offense thinking about a punt. Towson Smith quiet in that first half. Three catches, 33 yards. He's at the bottom of the screen. It's a handoff Simmons, and he is short of the first down. Oh, very close at the 39-yard line. It is enough for a first down. So he fell forward to pick up the first down. You can see Carney under center. He's going to pull it, pull it right behind. Oh, it's Carney. Excuse me. Nice having a quarterback with a little height and length. They're able to fall forward for that first. Six-foot-two senior Ben Carney from El Paso, Texas. Simmons again on the fullback dive. Four yards on first down. Yeah, I mean they are just they are running that play at will. And again, it may not it may not be one of those plays that gets you on the edge of your seat cheering because it's only three yards, but it's it's what they want to accomplish and it just keeps kind of moving the chain and just dominating that time of possession. The last time that Coast Guard was able to win in this series, back in 2018, both of these teams split time of possession. Also no turnovers yet in this game. Ball security has been strong. Carney pitches for Olmeyer, first down, although he's met right at the first down marker near midfield. Should have enough. Zach Olmeyer, a sophomore from Argyle, Texas, Dallas-Fort Worth area. Yeah, one of the first times in his game they've been able to kind of get out on the edge with that option look. But you're going to see right in the middle, Simmons, he kind of draws defenders, creates some space out on the edge. Good job kind of blocking downfield. Carney took a shot there, and with Aloda seemingly injured and unable to play, Carney has to stay healthy in this game lest they go to their third string quarterback. Olmeyer in motion, handoff Simmons left side. Short gain across midfield, we'll call it two yards. Well, two yards also call it a, a good stop there for Coast Guard. There is an injured player. Carney calling for somebody to come in from the sideline. It's a Coast Guard player, Tyler Jones who was running off the field, and this coaching staff told him, you know, it, there's, it looks like he's injured, perhaps his right arm he's holding, and they told him to just go down. Uh, so they're going to tend to Tyler Jones, a junior defensive end, and we'll see his condition when we return, with just under 12 minutes left to go in the third quarter.
10 straight runs to start this drive. So they've run 10 plays already in about a four minute drive and they're still at the 39 yard line. In their last game against Springfield, they had a 21 play touchdown drive. This is Simmons over the left side for three. We said Simmons had 22 carries at the half. I mean, he might hit 40, 45 carries in this game. He's at 30 carries now. It's early in the third quarter. And, uh, and I mean, and like contact on all of those. Like, right. You know, those are not easy just kind of bursting up the middle on touch. He's taking a beating on each one. 5'9", 210 pounds. Carry 31 for Simmons. Push the pile forward to the 32. And, and you got to, at this point, you got to give a hat tip here to that interior line led by the center there. Cole Biamonte, the right guard, Christopher Sinoco in the left guard, Nathan Mars. They're doing a great job just kind of getting some push, allowing them just to kind of operate this offense just like they would like three, four yards a touch. No surprise what's coming here. How does Coast Guard stop it? Yeah, I mean, they, right now they're not winning the leverage battle. Those guys up front doing a great job just getting lower, getting pushed. It is a first down for Cole Simmons. And, and, it's, and it's not... It's really not flashy, but Cole Simmons, just a great feel for where he's going to sidestep. Watch those guys. They're getting low. They're creating push. They're getting a, a jersey on a jersey. And, and again, it's really not flashy. We're going to watch Simmons. He just sees it. He knows where to go. He's able to kind of find that daylight, run behind those pads, and just pick up the necessary yards. Hard fort. Gonzalez in there now. And he'll get the carry over the left side for three yards. This drive over coming up on six minutes to start the second half. And Gonzalez, he's a kind of a nice change. I mean, they're doing the same thing, but Gonzalez is a bigger body at six foot, 210, whereas Simmons about 5'9", 210. A little bit more length to fall forward. But, it, it, you know, the, in that second quarter, they had a drive that was looking really successful. They tried to run an option out in the edge and kind of stall. Keep with that same philosophy. If, you know, force them to stop it, then adjust from there. Gonzalez breaks tackles, submarine to the 21. Here, talked about Gonzalez, a little bit of the bigger of the two backs, working kind of off tackle. Still just continuing to get positive yardage. 16th play of the drive is a Gonzalez run. He's about a yard short. This is the first time they've had to go to fourth down on this drive. It'll be the 17th play of the drive from the 19-yard line. They'll definitely go for it. Yeah, I mean, more than comfortable to go from it here at this point. Anything pretty much three yards and under. Seven-minute drive, 17th play coming up. Can Merchant Marine keep it going? Gonzalez is the fullback. Yes, they can to the 17-yard line. All runs. If you've been watching, that's you didn't lose track of all the passing attempts. <laughs> They've all been running plays out of the locker room and all right between the tackles, pretty much. We'll see here, you know, obviously, again, I kind of think you keep working it until they can't stop it, but he's got Talson Smith out to his left. Maybe that defense so focused on the run, you take a shot. Pitch for Gonzalez. And a good gain forward to the 11-yard line. They here now just working, getting the pitch to the senior out on the edge. Good blocking. You see a little bit of physical, a little push there. Running with some authority. From the 11-yard line, pitch left Gonzalez. Hit hard this time, spins forward about a yard or two short of the first down to the nine yard line. This is one of those drives, you ever hear the expression, you know, death by a thousand paper cuts. This is what this kind of this drive feels like. 20th play of the drive coming up. 19 straight runs to start the half. Eight minute plus drive. And very close at the seven, maybe seven and a half yard line. Could be a measurement. Nope, first down. So, first and goal from the seven. 
This is really something. So this is the 21st play of the drive coming up. So First many, and goal from the seven. Yeah. So many times you hear a defense coach say, we can't give up the big play on a drive like this. That means three yards. Mm. Yeah, I don't think they've had a play longer than six or seven yards. This is Gonzalez. He's down at the six-yard line. It's a nine-minute drive now. And kind of a, in, in a tag team fashion. Cole Simmons started it out. Once they kind of passed midfield, they handed it off to Gonzalez. He's kind of continuing to work it here in the second and goal. Gonzalez up the middle. Stop short. Now, let's look at the other side. If Coast Guard can keep Merchant Marine out of the end zone over these next two plays, what a huge shift in momentum that would be. You took 10 minutes. You ran 1,000 runs up the middle, but you still didn't score. Yeah, and I mean, they did try. They did were able to stuff them on that two-point right. conversion attempt, so they can certainly get it done here. But from the two, Gonzalez stopped, and it will come to this. Fourth and goal from the one. And they're going to check Simmons back in the game. This will be the 24th and presumably final play of this drive that's taken almost 10 minutes. And this is one of the biggest plays of the game. The score is tied at 13. Fourth and goal from the one. Simmons is the fullback. He's already scored a touchdown. When they were stuffed on that two-point conversion, Carney kept it himself. Simmons, touchdown, Merchant Marine. A 24-play touchdown drive, and it's 19 to 13. I mean, you're going to get it to Simmons right off the edge. Once again, kind of that, able to neutralize that line of scrimmage, bounce it, and clear a sailing in there for him. He started that drive out, number one. Cesar Gonzalez took over the controls, and then ultimately Simmons is the one who punches it in. The all-important extra point for Jackson Tinkus is up and good. That was almost like a, if you're the Merchant Marine Academy and you run it, that was almost like a resume type drive. This is what we do. Merchant Marine, 24 plays, all runs, 83 yards, and most importantly, a touchdown. The midshipmen will do the push-ups, 20 to 13. The Merchant Marine Academy, the midshipmen excited after an epic 24 play, 83 yard touchdown drive. They were all runs. It took just over 10 minutes for head coach Jamison Kroll. It was a beautiful drive in his eyes as it ended with a go ahead touchdown. George Ethan Ferry's kick is taken by Badani at the 19. Running laterally and tackled after maybe a one yard return. So, you are Coast Guard. You have been on the sideline for over 10 minutes of game time to start the drive. You look back at that drive, just a crazy 24-play, 83-yard drive for Merchant Marine now. The tendencies want to just quick strike, quick strike, let's let's get it back quick. What do you see from the Coast Guard offense? Well, I mean, that was a, an exhausting drive, but you're not down by much. The key thing is, hey, yes, you want to move the football, you want to tie it up. You need to give your defense a break. Mm. Like, you cannot go three and out here. You saw the time of possession, 30 to 9, 31 or so to 9 in terms of minutes. But as you said, Coast Guard only down by a touchdown. Arm and trap, fakes the handoff, throws near side, has James Pats near the 30, and Pats out of bounds at the 32 for a first down. 12 yard gain. Yeah, Pats and then number 10, Brooke Desta, both very active in that first half. They had combined for nine catches. The tenth one there with Pats making that grab. It's a handoff. And a short gain for James Wheeler. And that's one thing that this Bears offense has really been unable to do today is get the running game going. We were talking with the Merchant Marine staff early in the week, and they had kind of said that Coast Guard is running the ball more. You, they kind of caught you by surprise. Right. You, you mean, right. you, but they had felt that this was an offense that was becoming more balanced. And that is something they've kind of struggled to be able to do today is kind of find a little bit of that offensive balance by getting that run game going. Coast Guard's averaging almost 200 rushing yards a game this season as it's O'Shea, the backup quarterback, and O'Shea almost broke it, but he does pick up a first down out to the 45. 
Dennis O'Shea, junior from Decatur, Georgia, Atlanta area, gains 12, and a much needed first down there. Yeah, the coaches said, we asked them what's different about Coast Guard. They said, they're showing more devotion to running the ball this year. They were very frank about it, but it hasn't been a big weapon today. But that's been a nice wrinkle for them the few times they've gone to it, bringing in the backup quarterback, O'Shea, and kind of pairing him with Armantrout in the backfield. Hensley, the handoff up the middle. And a good pickup for Harrison Hensley of four yards, just short of midfield. We're already down to about three minutes left to go in the third quarter. And he's the he's the kind of the piece that's been missed. But you look at the growth of this offense here, almost 100 points per year since Armand Trout's freshman year. And it just kind of shows his growth and the growth of this offense around him, how they're continuing just to kind of get better. And that's what we talked about in closing the gap in this rivalry as well. Armand Trout. Throws the slant, caught by Pats. Spins forward for a first down. Caleb Green, the tackle to the 42-yard line. And over those three years, Coast Guard has gone from a 2-8 and eight record, winless in league, to 3-7. and seven. Now 5-4, and 3-3 three and three in league play this year. Putting together a good drive here. Their first possession of the second half. Run up the middle for Wheeler. Inside the 40, got about three on the play. And you can see, you see that growth. And if you're a Coast Guard, regardless of what happens today, the, the signs are there to continue to keep making those leaps forward. Because again, this is a, a team with only six seniors on it. Mm. So there's a lot of pieces that are going to be coming back as well. And CC Grant, when I asked him, what would a win mean? He said, a win in this game shows the belief that we've turned a corner. Hand off to Armantrout, throw out into the flat, caught by Desta, fighting towards the first down marker. He's close inside the 35 as they've run that handoff to Armantrout and then the pass several times, including for a touchdown. He's about a yard short. It'll be third down. Yeah, just gonna, they got scored on this play, but they took it downfield here, just getting an Armantrout just as he got it, quickly getting it out to the edge to Desta. Definitely four down territory here, third and a yard. They'll try to pick it up here on third down with Hensley to the left of Armantrout. Blitz coming off the edge. First down to the 30. Check that, it's Patrick. Patrick on the carry. And they're getting that sustained drive to give their defense a little bit of a break. Yeah, the ultimate goal, obviously, is try to get points on the board. Close that gap, but they needed to give that defense a chance to kind of regroup and catch their breath, and that's certainly what they've done thus far on this drive under a minute and a half to go already in the fastest third quarter of all time. Armantrout throws, intercepted! Headed back the other way, Merchant Marine. It is Joseph Franco in a foot race, and Franco tackled inside the 30, and a flag is down. Huge miscommunication on the edge. The ball went straight to Franco. Flag was at the very end of the play at about the 22-yard line. At the end of the return, personal foul, late hit. Going to go half the distance to the goal. First down, Merchant Marine. Critical turnover, the first of the game. Well, they've been able to stay away from turnovers there, trying to get it back out to the edge to Pats but did not see it, not enough on it there. And underneath is just Franco, and as you mentioned, he throws it right to him. He's staring him down. Franco sees it, you're gonna watch him step right in front of it. Pat's lost his footing a little bit. And after two interceptions, two years ago as a freshman, one a year ago, he had been able to stay away from the turnover in this game until that point. First interception of the season for Joseph Franco, senior cornerback from Staten Island, New York. And a huge momentum shift, and now Merchant Marine back on offense, chance to go up two scores, handoff Gonzalez. You know, they're going to start the drive here from the 13-yard line. I think they could squeeze six, seven plays out of this distance here, but they try to take a two-score lead. Yeah, I mean. Eight plays would be the max. <laughs> yeah, yeah probably a good six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Under a minute to go third quarter. Merchant Marine had a 24-play touchdown drive on its first possession of the half. 
This one's starting inside the 20. It's a handoff. Gonzalez over the right side to the five. With 45 seconds left to go. There is a flag on the far side of the field. Armand Trout, 17 touchdowns now, nine interceptions this season. That one was a crusher. Offsides, defense number 50, half the distance. Replay, second down. And this Coast Guard crowd stunned here on this beautiful afternoon. Looked like they were putting together a good drive that may end in a touchdown and ends up being an interception. Look at that. The run pass you normally see in this day and age. 71 runs, six passes. And it's Gonzalez who takes a hit at the two. Does have a first down with 35 seconds left to go in the quarter. It'll be first and goal. And as an offensive line, you just love, love those type of numbers to be able to obviously a triple option attack, but to be able to, that feeling of being able to dominate the line of scrimmage, you say, hey, let's just keep doing it. Gonzalez pushing his way forward for a Merchant Marine touchdown. Final 20 seconds of the third quarter, two yard touchdown run, and it is now 26 to 13. Second of the game for Gonzalez, 14th of the season. On for the extra point, Jackson Tinkis. Good job handling the snap by Trout. Kick is no good. Well, didn't have much feel to have to work with there, but th that was kind of uh, the Mariners' version of a quick strike offense. Coming off to turnovers, they were able to convert it into points and extend their lead. Jamison Kroll and the Merchant Marine Mariners have taken a 13-point lead now, 26-13. The extra point was no good. Three-play, 13-yard drive after the turnover. 18 seconds left to go in the third quarter. George Ethan Ferry to kick it away. This Coast Guard now down by two scores. End over end kick taken by Badani at the 13. Badani running near side. Dancing upfield out past the 30. Big day of college football as we head into mid-November. Terrific rivalry here and a terrific rivalry down in Florida. Miami and Florida State coming up at 3.30. That would be on ABC. Florida State right in the hunt for the college football playoff. Still plenty of time here, and not an insurmountable lead, but I, the pressure for a Coast Guard becomes, uh, all right, if we don't score mm. here, you know it's very likely that another eight, nine yep. minutes can go by before we get an opportunity to touch the football again. So it kind of changes the dynamic of this quarter, though, even though it's not a huge insurmountable lead, if you don't score here, opportunities could lessen. Wide open on the far side, huge play on first down. It's Polite. He lost the ball out of bounds, but it's a big gain out to the 47 and what should be the last play of the third quarter. He fumbled it out of bounds, but a good start to the drive for Coast Guard. Two touchdowns in the third quarter, the only scores for Merchant Marine in that quarter. They've taken a 13-13 half Scott time score and made a 26-13 lead. And as there's 15 minutes on the clock in the 43rd Annual Secretary's Cup, we head to the fourth quarter right after this. C.C. <laughs> Grant and the Coast Guard Bears down 13 points in the Secretary's Cup, heading to the fourth quarter. Coast Guard has the ball. Robert Lee, Craig Hobart, our entire terrific ESPN crew with you from New London, Connecticut on a beautiful Saturday afternoon for football. And these two service academies engaging in another spirited battle on the field. It's Armand Trout throwing far side. It is juggled and caught by Pats. That was a first down play, a good game. 
We talked about it just before the break, but Coast Guard really has to score on this drive. You wonder how many more possessions they're going to get in this game. Yeah, I mean, just the time of possession, which coming into this fourth quarter, Merchant Marine Academy was ahead with 31 minutes and 14 seconds of time of possession. So you're right. So if you don't score here, it could be possible you could lose another eight or nine minutes in this quarter. You might only get the ball one more time as O'Shea up the middle for a short game. I mean, Merchant Marine in that third quarter had a 24-play drive that ended in a touchdown that took 10 minutes off the clock. I mean, you this may be your second to last possession of the game, and you're down two scores. So they're really critical here that they score a touchdown on this drive. Not that you're not always trying to do that, but it takes on even more importance with the way they've been unable to stop Merchant Marine. Both quarterbacks in there, O'Shea and Armand Trout. They've tried to the hand off and pass with success several times. They'll hand it to Armand Trout. He throws it to Desta. He's got a first down inside the 35 to the 32. A very similar play that they had run before the end of the third quarter. O'Shea actually was their leading rusher coming into this quarter. Now look at that status. Merchant Marine has run the ball 73 times in this game for 263 yards. Armin Trout throwing deep far side. Jump ball is caught for the Coast Guard touchdown. 32 yards, James Pats, and it's 27-19. That's going to be working here against Franco, who had that interception. Franco cannot locate the football pass. A nice job just kind of going up. Beautiful throw there from Armantrout. And for Coast Guard, mission accomplished. We said they needed to get points on this drive. You know, you got a whole quarter to work with. It was important to respond, and they did. Brennan Holt's kick is up and good. Just like that, a minute and a half into the fourth quarter, Coast Guard responds. James Pats, his fifth touchdown catch of the year. Junior from the Baltimore area makes it 26 to 20. Beautiful day here, and the game has taken a bit of a turn as Coast Guard finishes off a five-play, 68-yard touchdown drive. It took less than two minutes on a 32-yard catch by James Pats. Well, you know, talking with the Coast Guard staff earlier in the week, their offensive coordinator, J.B. Wells, had a great saying. He goes, we live by the Joe, we die by the Joe. Two series ago, he threw that interception and ultimately led to points. But on that drive, you saw how the short-term memory, he turned around, made a beautiful throw to the Pats. So the offense did what they needed to do there to respond. Now it's up to this Bears defense. Can they get the Merchant Marine Academy off the field? Sidewinding kick taken at the 10 yard line. And just shy of the 30 is where Merchant Marine will start its drive first and 10. It just takes really one negative play. Coast Guard needs to force one negative play early in the downs. It's a whole different ball game. Yeah, I mean, just first down right here is a big one. If they're able to get downhill, pick up three yards, and almost it's like that snowball rolling down the hill, starting to pick up some momentum. When they had success, talking about the Coast Guard defense in the second quarter, it was. They were able to kind of stifle them early on, put them in second, third, and long situations. Simmons and Gonzalez have combined for 63 carries, and the longest one was 12 yards. And they fumble the ball. It's on the ground, and there's a negative play. Merchant Marine does recover, but it's a loss of two. First time Merchant Marine has put the ball on the ground today. Simmons has 34 carries for 124 yards. The longest carry he's had is seven yards. Gonzalez, 29 for 91, long of 12. Great job there by Simmons and the awareness to find that football because Carney had lost it off the handoff. Hey! Carney back to pass. Pass time, pressure's on. Carney trying to get away, rolls out to the right, tripped up and stopped. It'll be third and long. Good pursuit there. By Coast Guard's defensive player, Michael Shank. And things are unfolding just the way that this Coast Guard defense needs it. Nice job, they get the cut blocks up front, but there's nothing downfield forcing Carney on the move. 
Merchant Marine is nine out of 17 on third down today, but most of them have been third and two, third and three. This is third and eight. Not a situation Merchant Marine or any team likes to be in, but Merchant Marine not a team that has an explosive passing attack. Towson Smith, only three catches, 33 yards on five targets. Carney back to pass, flushed out of the pocket, throws it over the middle, incomplete. Intended for the tight end, Ben Reaney. It'll be a three and out. Yeah, no, interesting, you know, you're going to see here, Carney worked here, he's right, he's going to throw across his body a little bit over the middle and off balance, and lucky that was just incomplete, not intercepted. But the offense responded to Bears defense, which was just kind of pushed around through that entire third quarter, comes out here with a big stop, helped by that fumble on this uh, quarterback center exchange on that first down play. On to punch George Ethan Ferry on fourth and eight. Good spiraling kick to the far side of the field. Takes a huge Merchant Marine bounce. Heftral takes it. It's on the ground. Who's got it? Huge mistake. Merchant Marine says they've got it. They do. Game changing play at the 20 yard line. Ezra Tetral. And then he pushes a player after the play. A different player, excuse me. Special teams, it was a fake punt in the first half that led to Coast Guard points here. The ball's gonna hit the ground, he gotta get away from him. He tries to field it, cannot do it cleanly. Looks like it's gonna squirt back out, but the nice job there underneath the pile for that Mariners special teams to be able to create the turnover, get this offense back on the field after that big defensive stop. Simmons over the right side, demoralizing turnover. They had Force the three and out. They're going to get the ball back down by six. And just a, a critical, critical mistake by the punt returner. Muffs the punt. Now Merchant Marine a chance to make it a two-score lead. We had talked to head coach E.C. Grant early in the week. We said, hey, talk about special teams at Port and third phase. And he felt good about those units coming into today, but a critical error there. Simmons on his feet inside the five. An interception in the th third quarter. Led to a short field and a touchdown. Now a muffed punt here early in the fourth quarter. Merchant Marine knocking on the door to make it a two touchdown lead. Simmons, right side. Twisting forward, he's down at the one. What percentage would you put the odds that Cole Simmons is going to get the ball here? Uh, can you go higher than 100? Cole Simmons, touchdown. His third of the game, and it's 32 to 20. And just a key role of special teams. Everything was kind of lining up there for Coast Guard in terms of what they needed to do offensively and defensively. And off of that punt, giving that Mariner offense a second opportunity. They push it back in. Go. They'll go for two here. It's Carney. He didn't get it. Carney on the quarterback keeper did not get it. But it remains a 12-point lead, two-score game after the muffed punt. Leads to a short field. Merchant Marine cashes in on the Coast Guard mistake in the Secretary's Cup with just over 11 minutes to go. Merchant Marine has opened up a 12-point lead. Sun shining on Jamison Kroll and the Merchant Marine Mariners. Leading at 32-20, they'll kick off after scoring a touchdown. They lead their bitter rivals, the Coast Guard, by 12 with just over 11 minutes left to go in the game. It'll be George Ethan Ferry to kick it away as Merchant Marine trying to extend it to a five game winning streak in this series. Have not won five in a row over Coast Guard since the turn of the century. Again, could have let that ball go out of bounds. It's Badani who takes it out to the 28. We talk to coaches every week. What's the key to the game, coach? Take care of the ball, win the turnover battle. It's the difference in the game. Yeah, it looked like they were in an opportunity here to kind of wrestle momentum away from the Merchant Marine Academy. 
Here first, it would be an interception by number 18, the senior Joseph Franco. Off of this, that Mariners offense would convert that turnover into points. And then it looked like after a great Coast Guard defensive stop, they're gonna punt it away. And then a muff punt allows that Merchant Marine Academy offense to be able to get the football back. And then with great field position, they would end up punching it in and extending that lead. Still time though, as Armand Trout throws into the flat, it is caught for a moderate gain. It's caught by Ezra Tetrault, who just muffed that punt a moment ago, get him back involved with a six yard gain. Yeah, the Coast Guard, they had shown, you know, under two minutes, they could score quick, but for the Merchant Marine Academy, they're gonna be more than happy just to kind of give some of those underneath throws, come up, make the tackle. O'Shea, the backup quarterback, back in with Armin Trout, the starter to his left. Second down. And nope, fake handoff. O'Shea up the middle, has some room. O'Shea out towards midfield to the 48-yard line. O'Shea has done a good job running the ball. It's a first down. 13-yard gain. Here's their leading rusher on the day. And that pairing back there, creating a little bit of confusion for the defense. Either and this two-quarterback look's been very effective. They've run several different types of plays out of it. This will be O'Shea keeping again. Good hole up the middle across midfield to the 48. Now still 10 minutes and change left to go in this game. If they can score a touchdown, they get back to within one score and they put it on their defense again, but it's still a long way to go on this drive. Yeah, they've moved it effectively when they've had it in the second half, which hasn't been often. The handoff to Armand Trout throws to Desta, has some blocking. Desta spinning his way forward. He's been mostly quiet today other than that first touchdown to start the game. Takes it to the 43. It is enough for a first down. And they're sticking with, you know, usually when they've gone with this two QB look in the backfield, it's kind of been for a player or two then sub O'Shea out. As you mentioned, it's been very effective though, and they're just gonna kind of roll with it here. Giving them that kind of run pass option with either O'Shea keeping it or let Armand Trout throw. O'Shea keeps. Takes a hit, but another strong gain on first down of about six or seven yards to the 37. And that threat of handing it to Armand Trout, let him get it on the edge where he's got a, got a run pass option is really softening things up in the middle for O'Shea to be able to run. Hurry up offense here. Hand off to Armand Trout. Throws deep. Incomplete. Intended for Desta, there on the coverage, Caleb Green. But they had a great opportunity because there was a lot of confusion in that Merchant Marine secondary. They were not lined up. They also had a player sprinting off the field, just barely got off the field in time. But the time that it took Armantrak to kind of get to the edge and put that throw up, it allowed Caleb Green, the sophomore, to be able to adjust and get back there. Two plays to get four yards here, third down and four. They're gonna take O'Shea out of the game. Armand Trout stays in. The clock is stopped with 9.23 to go. One quarterback look here. This one's going nowhere. Glenn Patrick is stopped for a loss and it's gonna be fourth down. Jack Temple doing a great job of just winning the leverage battle, playing off the block and making the tackle in the backfield. You can see number 55 right in the middle. Use his hands, break off the block. Just make that tackle. This becomes the biggest play of the game so far. Coast Guard has to convert on this play. Fourth down and we'll call it six. If not, Merchant Marine will get the ball with under nine minutes to go and a 12 point lead. Coast Guard is gonna call a timeout. I think you, know, you don't like using timeouts when you're down, but you've gotta have a good play here. This is the biggest play of the game so far. We'll take a break. How will it turn out? We'll find out when we return. 32-20 Coast Guard trails. Back from timeout, the play of the game. Fourth and six for Coast Guard. They'll go with one quarterback, Joey Armantrout. They have to get six yards to keep possession. Have to get to the 33-yard line. Showing blitz, Armantrout takes the snap, pressure's on. Armantrout is sacked! The blitz coming from the secondary, Chad Holler brings him down. It's a change of possession. Defensive coordinator Harry Persante said about his safety, Holler, he, has, he is a ball magnet. He's a guy who makes plays there. They sent him from the second level. You see number 35, he's gonna creep down. That back on the inside there, he was kind of choosing between two players. You always gotta work inside out. He had to take Holler, he didn't. It allowed the number 35, the safe, to be able to make that big sack. 
to your point, they had one running back who had to block two players, either 49 or 35. Yeah, but you got to take that inside guy first, right? The shortest point between two distances is a straight line. He took the outside guy. It gave Holler that opportunity to get to the quarterback, and now you would imagine here, this, this first down play, as we've seen, Robert, it's very important. Can they put this Mariners offense back on a negative play? Gonzalez makes sure he doesn't as he runs over a defender in the secondary, Nico Berrios, for a first down. Now you get, you know, offensively, you kind of look at it almost like a boxing match. This is where just three quarters of body blows maybe starts to pay off and that defense gets tired. Usually where that first down play was three or four yards, we saw a big run there from Gonzalez. 14-yard gain, his longest of the day. Big hold left side again as Merchant Marine is just starting to lean on Coast Guard now with it just over eight minutes to go. And they did snap the ball fairly quickly there. I mean, they can take almost, you know they're not going to pass, so they can take almost 40 seconds off the clock every time they run a play. They're running hurry up here, 25 on the play clock. They run it again. It works anyways inside the 20 to about the 20-yard line. And I guess, you know, they're keeping the rhythm, though. Yeah, and they're looking at their bingo card. Do we use the clock, or do we just go ahead and put more points on the board? <laughs> and they're up by 12. But you're right. I mean, you would think here they would kind of just slow things down, but they're... Oh, they're in attack mode. Gonzalez yeah. is finding big holes and each and every time he takes it to the 15. And like we said right at the top, Robert, you know, it doesn't really matter what the classification is. A rivalry is a rivalry. You got a chance to yeah. kind of put away... Your rival, that's what the uh, Merchant Marine Academy is looking to do here. Halfway through the fourth quarter, the score was tied at 13 at the half. But a couple huge Coast Guard mistakes in the second half have led to two Merchant Marine touchdowns and are the difference in the game. An interception that was returned deep into Coast Guard territory and then a muffed punt was the real backbreaker has led to this 12-point Difference. Third down and two. Gonzalez up the middle for a first down to the nine. Once again, just, you know, I, I don't think as we're here in the fourth quarter, a great chance just to kind of give some love to just the interior of that offensive line for that Archer Marine Academy uh, offense there. Cole Biamonte there, the center. Nate Mars, the guard. Christopher Sonico, a player who stepped into some big shoes there at the right guard position. Gonzalez, no, Carney keeps. And Ben Carney inside the five. Let's talk about Ben Carney. He's a senior from El Paso. He didn't win the starting job in the offseason. He had sat behind guys like Ian Blankenship and others who've been stars at the quarterback position. They went with a sophomore, Jervy Alota. His coaches sang his praises. Ben Carney, they said he's the leader on the team. He's the guy who, when they're all out at sea, and we mean on military ships around the world, texts everybody, keeps them all in touch. He's fighting his way forward towards the end zone. He is the guy that everyone looks to. He gives the pregame speech, and he's the backup quarterback. Yeah, and you feel like, uh, you know, desperately they want to get him a score here in this rivalry. As you mentioned, it's he came in and he sat behind some other quarterbacks, and then they, as a sophomore, Derby Alata wins the game very easily, could have kind of gone in the tank, but he maintained that leadership and really allowed, even though we didn't see Derby uh, Alota today, it really kind of allowed him to develop as a quarterback this year because they said he was just able to focus on playing and not having to be a leader. Carney was able to take that role. Carney keeps into the end zone for a touchdown. Ben Carney extends the lead to 38 to 20. First touchdown run of the season for Carney. Been denied on a couple of two-point conversion opportunities there, though. Able to get across for six. The senior, he just keeps it, just follows behind Gonzalez. And what a feeling that's got to be. Huge smile on his face. His final Secretary's Cup looking like his team may be on the way to victory. Jackson Tinkus on for the extra point. Kick is up. Kick is good. Five and a half to go, 39 to 20. Merchant Marine extends it to a 19 point lead with another nine play, 48 yard drive. You'll be surprised to know they were all runs. And it's Merchant Marine on their way, up by 19. Merchant Marine all smiles on their sideline and quarterback Ben Carney 
with the 88th rushing attempt of the game for Merchant Marine. The Mariners punch it into the end zone again. Carney with his first touchdown of the season. Rushing touchdown. And I believe actually the first rushing touchdown of his career extends the lead to 39 to 20. On to kick it away is George Ethan Ferry. End over end kick taken by Badani at the 16. And he is somersaulted forward to the 30 yard line. Coming up tonight in SEC football, Ole Miss and Georgia. Should be a good one down between the hedges tonight, 7 o'clock on ESPN. Five and a half minutes to go here in New London. Three score game. Coast Guard's got to score. They've got to onside kick it. And they've got to do all that very, they've got to recover the onside kick. They've got to do that multiple times. And they'll come out in a desperate state here down 39 to 20. Merchant Marine trying to beat Coast Guard in the Secretary's Cup for the fifth year in a row. The last time that happened was 1998 to 2002. Armantrout throws into traffic, incomplete. Almost intercepted by Thomas Joyce, number 17. Dangerous pass, intended for Desta. And a triple coverage here, and Joyce, he's a player who's moved all around this defense throughout his career. Armantrout on the move, you're gonna see number 17, Joyce, get right in front of it, right through his hands. He's played in the secondary, it's linebacker up on the line of scrimmage. A really versatile defender. Armatrout sacked. Pressure got to him, or Chessy there initially. Scroggins helped finish him off. Yeah, as a defensive lineman, this is that point in the game where you got that lead. You, you, they, you know they have to throw. Start pinning those ears back, getting upfield. You see the big man, number 68, or Chessy. Nice job kind of just staying low, getting to the shoulder, and get quick pressure. You could see in the timeout the difference in the body language between the two schools. You could just, the academies, you could just see which team was winning, judging by the body language of the players. Armin Trout rolls out to the right. He's pressured. Hit as he throws, incomplete. Flag down. It's going to be a pass interference against Joyce, who gets into it with Badani, pushing and shoving. Another flag comes in. Thomas Joyce getting into it. Could be four flags on the field. And I think Thomas Joyce is going to take the worst of this yeah. infraction. Oh, if I had a flag in my pocket, I would have thrown it too there on <laughs> Joyce. I mean, just unnecessarily just threw a punch there. Joyce, a senior linebacker from south of Boston, Taunton, Massachusetts, leads the team in tackles. And Jamison Kroll telling him to settle down there, but I think it's entirely certain he's going to be able to stay in the game. We'll see. The officials conferring with just under five minutes left to go. Defensive pass interference, number 17, 15-yard penalty. We also had two dead ball fouls. On Sportsmanlike, number 10, on Sportsmanlike, number 17. Those penalties will all set 17 on Merchant Marine, 10 on Coast Guard. It's their first of the game. So Desta and Joyce each pick up offsetting personal fouls. It is a pass interference penalty, however. They're actually surprised that it was offsetting. There certainly was some shoving there, but you're going to see Joyce here. When it looks like it's all over, I'll we cut a little short there, but he actually wound up kind of just throwing a right punch there. So it is a move out to the 41 yard line for Coast Guard. Down by 19. Deep throw for Desta. Broken up incomplete. It's the same two players, Thomas Joyce meeting Desta. And there, a nice job there. Coming off a little squirmish there. Joyce doing a nice job of just covering some ground and breaking that up at the last second. He's going to look for Desta. Looks like he's got him. You're going to see number 17 come in your pitcher just right there. Beautiful timing to break that up. 
We talked about kind of the common theme in these past four victories for Merchant Marine in this series. They've averaged over 42 points a game against Coast Guard during this four game winning streak. They've got 39 on what looks like it's gonna be their fifth win in a row. On second down, Armand Trout has a lot of room to run. He'll go up the middle and slide. Just shy, I'll call it the 47 yard line. As Coast Guard goes into the offseason, retools, gets older, gets stronger. They've got to find a way when this game comes around next year to stop Merchant Marine. Well, this is definitely a program that's moving in the right direction. Yes. Certainly maturing, certainly uh, getting better. But again, at the little things. I mean, we went in halftime tied. Mm -hmm. Merchant Marine comes out, puts together a 10 minute drive, looked like they were going to take control. And Coast Guard had the opportunity to re seize momentum. And then two turnovers, one through an interception. One on special teams just changed the dynamic of this game in a hurry. Desta picks up the first down off the throw from Armand Trout to the 48. As the field is now completely in the shadows. You see the all-time series 43rd meeting for the Secretary's Cup, which officially started in 1981. They've been playing well before that. Again, these cadets midshipmen will be allies at sea after graduation, but it appears the Merchant Marine will once again get the best of their rivals. Armand Trout gets away from pressure and dances out of bounds inside the 45. They close the season every year, the regular season against each other. We talked about the improvement Coast Guard has made. Just look at their conference record, 0-6 three years ago to one and five to what should be three and four this year. But it doesn't make it oh, almost a late hit there. No, not the 40 yard line. It's a couple of yards short of a first down. Nonetheless, this is the game, the Secretary's Cup, and it'll be a bad taste in Coast Guard's mouth as they go into the off season. Just over three minutes remaining. And we talked about the, the alums, the the cadets, the, the graduates, watching all around the world through this streaming process. The, the magic of the internet is O'Shea, a stop for no game. Coach Kroll said, I heard from a guy in Singapore, a guy in the Indian Ocean. It's a crazy time of night over there. They're still watching probably, uh, but they can't wait for this game. It, it means so much to these programs. And just in a part of a bigger picture for all these young men. For Merchant Marine Academy, very many of them, as you mentioned, if they don't play in a bowl game, very quickly will be heading out to sea and you know, and it's speak, speaking with both coaching staffs over the years, they all, these young men, they truly playing for the love of the game. Because they say if you come to either one of these academies just to play football, you're in the wrong spot. Right. Football is a release. Football is fun. And it's a building block for something bigger and greater, the discipline, the camaraderie. But it's not just about football here. But you see how much they come out here and just the love of the game and how much this rivalry means. And for Merchant Marine Academy, for a lot of these young men, they're about to head out to sea for several months. And sure make them feel good heading out with a rivalry win. Let's see some of the intensity and big hits in this game. It's certainly not for the weak of heart. Yeah, no, this is, they've been flying around and taking some shots in this Merchant Marine Academy defense. It's just been kind of swarming, creating turnovers, interceptions, a big hit there. And as you said, I mean, these are not, you know, these are Division Three players that are going to go serve our country. You look at the heights and weights, there's a lot of 5'10", 200-pound guys. These are not, you know, guys who will be suiting up for Ole Miss, Georgia. But it's no less intense at this level. These guys, it means everything to them. Blitz is on, handoff, arm and trout, throws out into the flat for Desta. First down and out of bounds. And the, the coaches tell us every year, football practice is the best part of these kids' days. They are so busy from 6 in the morning until 10 o'clock at night studying, going through all the different parts of the regiment here. The best part of the day is the two hours they get to practice football, much less the games. And you know, you'd like to think everybody plays for the love of the game, but it's just not true. These kids, this is their release, as you said. This is the best part of their day. Armand Trout back to pass, throws deep near side for Desta, pushes off. It's incomplete and the flag is down. You know, kind of just talked about that. And so much now, you look at college football, talks about transfer portal, NIL. I think, you know, a player who so perfectly kind of just encapsulizes this 
rivalry is Ben Carney. There's no flag on the play for defensive pass interference. The backup quarterback from Merch Marine Academy, he got beaten out several years. But this year, in this game, you see there just a little bit of hand fighting there. No problem there with them picking up the flag on that play. But just coming in, getting an opportunity as a senior in this big rivalry and winning. Handoff for Patrick, who's running hard inside the 25. Glenn Patrick, who scored a touchdown earlier, picks up a first down. 14-yard gain. Final two minutes here. It would kind of a player who waited his turn and here got his opportunity and he delivered. Certainly a great way to finish your football career as Patrick cuts up inside and takes it inside the 15 to the 13. Coast Guard trying to put one final score on the board here in the final 90 seconds of the game. And for Coast Guard, certainly a frustrating second half, but a lot of these players are gonna get another shot at this rivalry again next year. Again, it's still a young team. Yeah, this is a 19-point game right now, but really the game turned on two plays in the second half. They hear this interception. That the Merchant Marine Academy there is able to return it. They would turn that INT into points, and then after a Coast Guard defensive stop, they look like they're going to get the offense back to football. The miscue on trying to field that punt gave the Merchant Marine Academy that offense back on the field with great field position that they were able to once again capitalize and extend that lead. Merchant Marine, if they don't get the ball back, to this point in the game has run the ball, rushing attempts 88 times for 333 yards. That, I mean, people say ground and pound, three yards in a cloud of dust. I mean, call it what you want. That is ball control offense. They had said earlier in the week, the coaching staff, that we need to control time. We need to win time of possession. They certainly did that. They dominated it today. Throw into the flat for Desta, trying to break a tackle, does so. And brought down at the one yard line. The clock will stop after the first down with a minute 24 to go. And Merchant Marine did not complete a pass in the second half. So they had three completions at halftime. They have three now. And they've scored 26 points. It's a handoff and ridden down from behind by Teddy Brunger, the leading tackler on the team. Set up a second and goal with a minute to go. Timeout. Those two mistakes, the interception and the long return, the muffed punt, the real backbreaker. They were down 26-20 at the time and just forced the three and out had just scored on their last possession. Fumbled the ball away on the kickoff, or on the punt, immediate touchdown. And that was all the boost Merchant Marine needed to not look back. And just kind of almost like that psychological advantage. That Coast Guard, you know, you're working against a team that every time they touch the ball, it could be a long spell before your right. offense gets another chance. So Merchant Marine will improve to seven and two on the season, five and two in league play. Again, they have a chance to play in a bowl game next week in Division Three. They're not going to make the playoffs, uh, but they could play in the New England Bowl or the ECAC Bowl to be determined. Coast Guard will finish the season at five and five. It's a handoff for a lightman who's in for the touchdown. An exciting moment there for Jacob Vecchio a senior from Southington, Connecticut. Vecchio, who is a captain, giving the big man an opportunity to punch one in and get across the goal line. Usually he's paving the way for Coast Guard scores. There he gets the opportunity to bring one in himself. And as a typical offensive lineman, he'll go right back and snap the ball and do the dirty work again. up and good. 
39-27 with under a minute to go. Jacob Vecchio, senior offensive lineman, punches it in for his first career touchdown. Here the game, I mean, you know the uh, other offensive linemen love kind of blocking on that one, <laughs> giving their, uh, giving one of their partners there an opportunity to live every big man's dream. Mm. Four-year startup, Jacob Vecchio. This will be his final game. So under a minute to go, Coast Guard will onside kick it with under a minute remaining. Still need two touchdowns, so have to recover the onside kick. And he <laughs> recovered because I don't think uh, Merchant Marine Academy has any uh, any fears about trying to run off 57 seconds. No. <laughs> I mean, if you missed it earlier, Merchant Marine started the second half with an almost unbelievable 24-play, 83-yard drive that took 10 minutes and 10 seconds. All 24 plays were running plays. They took off two-thirds of the time in the third quarter, took the lead 20-13. to 13. They have not relinquished that lead. Here's the onside kick. It's loose. Coast Guard's got it. A successful onside kick at the 46-yard line. That's not something you see very often. No, it was wonderfully executed. Beautiful kick. Took a couple of bounces, got across that 10 yards. Special teams earlier in this, qu uh, in this quarter that kind of changed the tide, but here, nope. Oh, he, Number 36, you kind of got to go attack that there. It looked like he thought maybe it wasn't going to go. The full 10 yards created that window there for Coast Guard to be able to get on it and give this offense a chance to get back on the field. Laboulier, a freshman wide receiver, Matthew Laboulier recovered the onside kick. So, with 56 seconds left, Coast Guard 54 yards away from a touchdown to try to make it a one-score game. Low snap, one hopped into Armantrout. He'll throw deep for the home run ball. Desta leaps in the air, intercepted. Joseph Franco off the deflection from Joyce, and that'll do it. Second interception of the game for Franco. The versatile Thomas Joyce, number 17, who moves around. He's been doing a really nice job in his fourth quarter, playing in the secondary, just kind of Roman around does an outstanding job of timing that up in the old tip drill. And Franco, who had a big interception and return earlier in the second half, there in the right spot to bring that one down. Uh, Joyce's timing in this mm. fourth quarter has just been impeccable at times in terms of breaking up passes. That one leading to the turnover to kind of put this one away. First two career interceptions in his final game for senior Joseph Franco. Give Joyce the assist on that one. Carney will take a knee, and we'll have to do that one more time here. You can do that at any moment now. About a four-second difference between the play clock and the game clock. So he'll take one more snap. This will technically be the 90th rushing attempt for Merchant Marine in this game, and that will be the final snap. Merchant Marine, for the first time since 98 to 2002, has beaten Coast Guard five years in a row. The final score, 39-27 in the annual Secretary's Cup. And able to get that fifth straight win in this rivalry with really just almost a formulaic win, just doing what they do best. And the midshipmen in charge onto the field. It'll be a happy bus ride back to Kings Point for those young men and women. I don't know how they have so much energy after all those push-ups. And they're uh, going down to give the Coast Guard Bear a little bit of the business. <laughs> what did the Bear do? He's a little outnumbered down there. <laughs> Poor guy. Uh -oh. It'd be nice if somebody stepped in here as they've just gone down to the cadets section down there. And the universal symbol for loss being uh, displayed there. And Merchant Marine has won it five years now in a row. 39-27 the final in a hard-fought game that really turned on those two big Coast Guard mistakes in the second half. The interception, the muffed punt. And Jamison Kroll, the head coach 
for Merchant Marine. And we're now joined by the quarterback for this game, the victorious quarterback, Ben Carney, a senior Ben, Robert Lee, and Craig Harbert with you. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. When did you know that you were going to be the starting quarterback today? I knew in the beginning of the week, Coach Kroll told me, and you know, Jervy's done great things for us this season, and I, I was prepared, the coaches prepared us, so it was really just going out and doing everything I was taught, and it was good, you know. Nothing's better than this, honestly. Well, Ben, you've been a part of a lot of these games, and won every one in this uh, rivalry, but now you got a chance to kind of be the quarterback. But talk about taking on the role as a starter today, but even as a backup leading up to it, the coaches said you were still a leader. How were you able to kind of walk that line? Man, it's just so easy with these guys. You know, us seniors, we're such a close class, and all the underclassmen, you know, they put us in leadership positions, and it's just awesome. It's, it's easy. It's easy with this team. It's easy with these coaches. So. I'm just really, really grateful, and I'm proud of these guys, and I'm proud of the coaches. Ben, we've been talking so much about what you guys do off the field and what you'll have in the future. Give the folks out there an idea. One month from now, where are you going to be? Or, One or maybe a now? year from now. Oh, a year from now, uh, I'll be sailing on my uh, engineering license, so it'll be, uh, it'll be great. If you can, Ben, just try to describe for us how this feeling of watching a lot of these games from the sideline and here as a senior stepping in and getting to win in the rivalry. I mean, explain to us what that means and feels like. I'm just so grateful. I'm, I'm, there's, you can't put words to it. You know, with this team, you know, you're representing something greater than yourself and, you know, we're all bought into it and I'm just so proud of our guys and I'm, I'm glad I was in this position. Ben, congratulations on the win. Go join him with your teammates. All Enjoy right. the celebration. Congratulations. All right, thank you. Ben Carney, senior quarterback from El Paso, Texas. Leads his team to victory. He'll join in the line as the alma maters are played. the Coast Guard alma mater, and now the Merchant Marine alma mater. Kings Point home of Merchant Marine Academy, 39-27. The final score in favor of Merchant Marine, fifth year in a row. They have beaten their rivals from the Coast Guard. They'll present the Secretary's Cup. Carrying the Cup is Vice Admiral John Perry, Senior Vice President for Military Affairs at USAA. 
will take a 30 to 13 lead in the all-time series in the Secretary's Cup, 37-15 overall. The Secretary's Cup started back in 1981. And director of athletics, Mr. Christmas It's headed back to Kings Point, Long Island. No need for a change of address. Five years in a row. Kings Point, Jamison Kroll, who's going to join us in just a moment. He'll hand the trophy to his players. They win the Secretary's Cup once again this year in a hard-fought battle, improved to 7-2 and two on the season. And Coast Guard will wrap up its campaign at 5-5. Five and five. Last time they won five games was back in 2019. But a disappointing finish to the season for Coast Guard. And what an atmosphere here today. I mean, incredible weather, the scenic atmosphere, and a hard-fought hard fought game between these two schools. Yeah, just a, a great rivalry. We've seen Coast Guard continue to make strides in the right direction, but it's Merchant Marine Academy with that. Just triple option attack, the ability just to dominate the line of scrimmage and control time is just ultimately the factor working off of a couple of mistakes by that Coast Guard team. We're now joined by the victorious head coach, Jamison Kroll of Merchant Marine in his second season. Coach Robert Lee, Craig Hobart, congratulations on the win. You said to us during the week, no one cares if you win four straight if you don't, if you lose this one. That's a fact. Now you've won five straight. How, tell us about your feelings right now. You know, it's really not about five straight, right? It's it's four for the seniors and it's one for the plebes, right? It's about passing down the legacy and giving them an opportunity to do it moving forward. Well, Coach, you know, I, we talked to you earlier in the week. We didn't know maybe it might be the sophomore quarterback. I know you're going to uh, pass a casino or two on the way home. you got a great <laughs> poker face. What I did know. it mean here for uh, Ben Carney to be able to kind of uh, get this win as a senior? I'll probably get emotional if I talk too much about him, but Ben is a tremendous leader. He took getting – you know, getting passed up early in the season as well as anybody I've ever seen, especially as a captain. He just kept preparing for 10 weeks, and it paid off here in the end. Great to see him get that last touchdown of the game to cap yeah. off his career. Coach, when you think about these things at night, you draw up the game plan during the week. Is this how you envision it? You ran the ball 90 times today for 330 yards. You had an epic 24-play, 83-yard touchdown drive to start the second half. Yeah. Is this how you draw it up? Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, we'll take that all day. But, I mean, at the end of the day, our defense did a tremendous job. It was a close game. We got a huge pick, punch another one in. I mean, that was that was a huge part of the game. Our defense, Coach Pasante, Coach Scala, do a tremendous job preparing our D. Coach Kickle uh, recruits his butt off and, and does a great job with the offensive game plan. Well, I know as an offensive line coach, now the head coach, you had to give up those duties, but it had to be great to talk about that group up, up front, especially those three interior guys that yeah. just did a great job of getting pushed today. Yeah, I mean uh, – uh, it's next man up. We lost Randy Rupel, who was probably our best offensive lineman in week two, and, and Chris Sinaco stepped up, Cole Biamonte stepped up, and then the seniors, Nate Mars and Jacob Barral, have been leading the way the entire time. Uh, we're really excited about the group in the future, but the one that's leaving us is pretty damn darn good. <laughs> Coach, congratulations on the win. Have a safe trip back to KP, and we'll talk to you again next hey, year. I just, I just want to thank you guys first and foremost, okay? But secondly, shout out to the Brotherhood that's watching all over the world on the streams, okay, Alaska, the Straits of Saipan, all over the world. Okay, we appreciate it. We got the best brotherhood in the nation. Jamison Kroll, congratulations from the Merchant Marine Academy. We look forward to this game every year. Congratulations on the win. Thanks, guys. Jamison Kroll and Merchant Marine, 39-27 the final. That will do it from here in New London, Connecticut, for our entire terrific ESPN crew. Craig Hobart, Robert Lee saying so long. Final score, Merchant Marine 39 and Coast Guard 27. The Mariners win the Secretary's Cup for the fifth year in a row. You can check out all the games online on the ESPN app. Have a great night, everybody.